Good afternoon. We are in the afternoon of day four of the state versus Hannah Gutierrez read. It's February 27th, 2024. This morning, we saw the medical examiner testify about the cause and manner of death. And then we got into a very brief witness with regard to a cell phone, cell bright dump, and a few text messages that haven't really been circled back on by the prosecution. And then in the end of the morning session, we got into a firearms and reconstruction expert who was showing the jury how the revolver in this case worked and ultimately made the opinion that Alec Baldwin could not have fired the fatal round at Helena Hutchins without having the hammer of the 45 long Colt revolver all the way cocked back and pulling the trigger. So as we resume this afternoon, we are getting right into Mr. Bowles, the defense attorney's cross-examination of this expert witness. So with all of that, we are going to go directly to court after the intro. For all of you that were here because you got your Lawnard app notification, um, sometimes when we increase members on the app, it sometimes breaks the internet, but the law nerds are used to breaking the internet. You guys are a break the internet kind of community. So we're going to roll the intro and then we're going to get into court, hopefully at 1.25 speed. So we can zoom, zoom through all of the, you know, moments that court goes to sidebar because it keeps happening. So let's see if we're going to get a feisty cross-examination or if he's just going to be like, here would be my cross. Did Hannah Gutierrez read fire the gun? No? Okay. Thanks. Let's go. Hey there. I'm Emily D. Baker, the internet's go-to legal analyst, breaking down the legal side of the pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. I'm a big fan of the cursey words. I've been a licensed attorney for over 17 years, but this is not legal advice. This is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not <laughs> Let's get into it. As always, I will be grabbing your questions as we go and answering them on court breaks when we can or talking over people's training and experience that we kind of know. Replay crew, love you. Everything will be time stamped down below. Chat, let's ride. Let's ride. We're back in court. Did everyone have a good lunch? Let me know what you had. I went back to my typical court lunch of uh, Trader Joe's chicken nuggets with um, a little bit of chipotle sauce and some... Um, Fritos that I'm not done with yet. My husband's like, can I cut you an apple? I'm like, I, I promise I'll eat an apple later. <laughs> so, you know, oh, frozen grapes are my favorite. My friend Chris introduced me to frozen grapes, especially when we're with at like the cotton candy grape. I love frozen grapes so much. I love frozen grapes so much. So we're going to Let's see. Let's get us to 1.25. If it gets spicy, I'll put it Thank back to normal speed. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, I wanted to ask you first uh, off, I think your conclusion, what you stated earlier, is that based on your expert review of that Baldwin revolver, the shooter had to have fully cocked that weapon and pulled that trigger to cause it to fire. Is that? Oh, I'm sorry. That's what he said. I also. Um, I apologize. Um, I have more tahin gummy bears. Okay, you're on. Okay. Uh, sir, if I can ask that again, because Target, I think your conclusion, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'm going to go back to the, the Baldwin revolver today. that you examined in your expert opinion that the shooter had to have fully cocked that weapon and had to have pulled that trigger all the way, pulled the trigger to fire it. Yes, yes. On the first part, I bifurcated my answer in the report: either pull the trigger, which I regard as a volitional act, or have already depressed it. He yes, already sir. depressed it. The very instant he let go of the hammer, it would fire. So, sir, for example, if I appreciate the clarification on if the trigger was down when he pulled the hammer back, if he let the hammer go, it would have fired as opposed to pulling the hammer back, then pulling the trigger. So he said it could be either or. So if Baldwin already had the trigger pulled and then cocked the hammer back and let go of the hammer, it would have gone off, which is actually closer to what Baldwin said in his 2020 interview. He said he didn't have his finger on the trigger. But if he was stressed, if he maybe he didn't notice if he's not um, used to gun handling. But then in his police interview, he said he is like the gunniest gun expert of gun experts and he knows everything about movie guns. So who knows? But that was a really good distinction. And I'm glad that we we did that. But either way, finger on the trigger. Yep. Dr. Baldwin were cross that was helpful. that weapon and had his finger in the trigger guard. And then Nishay, I'm going to check right now. Had it fully cocked and, and it slipped and let go. I'd imagine Would so. Would that fire that weapon? 
only if he had the trigger pulled or depressed. They're okay. similar, but I make a slight distinction between it being depressed versus pulled. Okay, so sir, so either way, that shooter had to either have it depressed, have his finger in the trigger, say, I don't, or pull that I trigger mean, for that to fire. Gummies and have it cocked and have it cocked. fully cocked, fully cocked. Yes. Okay. Okay, now I noticed earlier when you were uh, oh, doing a demonstration with Gary on the uh, you exercised extreme muzzle so discipline. They are I'm going to call it gluten-free and vegan. Um, vegan. You learned that, correct? Not to ever point that weapon at a, an individual, a human. Long ago, yes, sir. Been around guns a long time. I have. I mean, and one of the most important rules, and I saw when you. This isn't the Baldwin sucks trial. I mean, the Baldwin sucks trial will happen when Baldwin goes on trial, but I don't think. I, I understand that they're trying to shift to like, if Baldwin didn't pull the trigger this wouldn't have happened however if it was just loaded with blanks things could have happened but they shouldn't have been this bad and when they were blocking it should have been loaded with dummies and then nothing would have happened so walk down you had it either down up it was never pointed at a person that's one of the most important rules of gun safety isn't it i agree okay and sir another rule that i noticed when your son was on that video um, and when you were demonstrating you never had your finger in that trigger guard is that another rule you learned from a long time ago? Well, we were demonstrating something there which had, in which the trigger yes. saved the, the gun from firing. If we had depressed it, of course, it wouldn't be a useful demonstration. No, and I understand <laughs> I, my question wasn't good. You never put your finger in that trigger guard until you were ready to See, pull that trigger in some manner. Yes. This okay. is the style of cross now, I very much with like regard to the cross draw, I know you've been around guns for a long time. But with regard it's to the cross draw, would you agree that somebody that was not familiar with that draw answer. would need to have training on that draw? You'd have to have some understanding of where the firearm is, how the holster works, whether it's got a safety strap or not. And then, of course, get it out of that area and swing it around, as was shown in the videos that I've looked at. Swing it around. Mr. Baldwin. Yes, sir. And did you see the video where when he pulls it out, his finger is in the trigger guard? Damn it. I certainly did. And again, that can be very dangerous, sir, based on your expert conclusion, if he has that fully cocked correct and it's loaded and fully cocked yes yes sir and, and it's loaded so and it's loaded which when you matters that video, to her did you make a determination as to whether he should have drawn that with his finger in the trigger guard it's been a while since i've looked at it i was trying to decide let's look at it together things if that's the evidence gun i was satisfied it was because of the plain bare metal hammer and then of course looking at can i really determine if his fingers inside the trigger guard but not on the trigger itself i could never never resolve it can we watch it together because of the camera angle and in any event, Chad, I'm um, trying to let the pulls it out. The I'm trying to let the pulls it out go. Well, it doesn't matter what it's cross draw. It's if you're going to cock the gun, which he did after it's out. I do remember that when it's out of the holster, you can see him cocking it. And it's now clear of the holster, but we're back to, or I'm back to, I can't tell if he's already got the trigger depressed or it gets pulled later. Okay, sir. <clears throat> and with regard to your conclusion, I want to make sure I was clear on that. I know <clears throat> that you um and I, I don't want to use the word critical but you didn't think that aggressive testing by the fbi was a good idea i didn't think it was necessary in this case given the context what are the issues in the case you didn't need to in beat it mind, with it a hammer issue that the hammer got struck by anything or that the gun got dropped and so you didn't believe that the fbi even needed however law enforcement asked the fbi to do it and the fbi is like sure so it's really a criticism of the investigators which is also fair to say like, but there's no evidence of that. I don't know if he saw the Alec Baldwin 2020 interview because that's what they were basing their investigative decision on was a television interview. To do that test? From my viewpoint, no. Okay. It was not a, a useful or necessary test to strike the hammer of the fully cocked evidence gun. With a mallet. Did you also say that you did not find any damage to that weapon that would have prevented it from firing as designed? And I'm talking about not after the FBI, but prior. Is that your conclusion? Yes, if the hammer were replaced and the trigger replaced and the bolt, it was a perfectly functioning, authentic replica of a classic firearm. Okay, sir, and, and in your inspection of that weapon, that Baldwin revolver, did you see any modifications that would have changed the firing um, characteristics of that weapon? No, not at all. In fact, I went through, I think there are 12 other revolvers, nine of them are Pietas. And I took them all apart with the help of Sorry, my younger Mr. son, Tanisha. Mike. And we looked at the sears, it's the, the triggers, witnesses. the uh, full cock notches, and they were all equivalent. You could have swapped them out because they're carefully manufactured parts. So that's how I addressed and answered that question in my own mind. Okay, sir. So other than the FBI uh, testing, breaking those components, you didn't see any other evidence of modification or damage? I did not. Okay, sir. Um, <clears throat> with regard to the, the rounds that you were talking about, 
The um, Sterling brass is used by hand loaders at times. Hand loaders use Sterling brass. Is that true? Yes, it's that's their nobody, primary market. Nobody I'm one of their consumers. Hand uh, were. Small ammunition companies like the one, the box of ammunition that the prosecutor showed earlier, have also used their brass. Remington, Winchester, they of course have their own. So, uh, and can you tell the jury, a uh, hand loader, if they it. use, um, I mean, they can use any type of primer, any type of powder, any type of bullet in a case, right? In the no, no, that, that's definitely not true. Okay, how do how do what is a well? Let's start with the primer. That's the spark plug in your car. It's the spark plug in ammunition. There are large pistol primers and there are small pistol primers. The Colt cartridge requires a large pistol primer. There are also rifle primers that have the same dimensions, but they're harder Thanks, and usually have more explosive in them. Do. The same way there are small rifle primers. So you got four types. Then they could be plain brass, if that's your pleasure for aesthetics, or nickel plated. And I've seen them both ways. So we got four types and two finishes. There are even some that are custom for bench rest shooting and other exotic uh, competition, but those are the four main. The powders, yet another thing, they're powders that are specifically manufactured for handguns. You've got a big bore and a heavy bullet that's gotta be accelerated in a short distance. So <clears throat> those powders have to burn very fast and produce their energy. Rifle powders, if you shoot a 3030 or a 3006, you couldn't take the powder that's in one of your rifle cartridges and put it in a pistol cartridge and get it to work. It basically fizzle or squib. They burn it. It's like sawdust, sticks, and logs. Powders burn at different rates for shotguns, pistols, and that's rifles. A good analogy. So there's a lot of uh, thought that's gone into this over the last century and a half of how you make all this come together to not blow up the gun, to achieve the desired pressure and velocity, and of course, produce an accurate shot. Yes, sir. And so did you have any evidence when you looked at the live rounds from the rest set that those were hand loads or those were some other type? Did you determine that? Well, they're in Starline brass, which is sold for hand loaders. But as I said, a commercial manufacturer can buy Starline brass, just as you saw in that one box. The bullets look more amateurish to me. Uh, in fact, I have that same bullet uh, with a blue lube, and it's a cast bullet. It doesn't come in cartridges. I, with the um, blue lube. So I don't have a definitive answer on it. They, yep. they were virgin cases. That means they hadn't been fired previously and then reloaded. They were shiny inside. Um, so they were first time assembled, and the powder... Uh, their physical forms, just as I mentioned, look like a powder called bullseye, which is probably the oldest pistol powder around. It's very popular. I use it myself. Uh, it's normally associated with hand loaders, but it doesn't stop the industry from buying a, you know, a ton of it and loading a few million rounds. Okay, sir. So, so you didn't make a definitive determination, but those rounds appeared amateurish, which would be more like a hand load. Is that fair? Yes, that's, that has kind of a, a demeaning character to it. I, I pride myself on my <laughs> hand loads and they look fine, but they'd already been disassembled. So I didn't get to see the quality of the crimp and just where the crimp was made. That's where you hold the bullet in the cartridge case. I wish I'd seen them before they were disassembled. Disassembled. So, but but when you looked at it, it did appear, I'm just trying to establish. The virgins were shiny on the inside. Yes. Okay. Oh, if I could. The could hand loads I'm assuming are, are similar to a hand rolled joint that's what i'm that's what i'm that's what i'm going with that you are a hand loaded yeah, round but yeah linda and that. i pride right, myself on my hand loads all right after we talked about the shiny virgins oh, yeah, and the beating off the cock notch i i'm having a hard i'm having a hard day <laughs> Need to be. It seemed to be what he said. We've learned a lot in this trial. I don't know if we're talking. I don't know if we're talking about weapons or if we're all just writing a spicy book together. I okay, I'm gonna do my best with this, Mr. Haig. I hope you can see this. Yes, I can. Okay. Do you see this is State's Exhibit 110 that's been introduced? Uh, have you ever seen this photo? The yes, I have. Okay. We, we saw this yesterday. Uh, yeah, we saw it yesterday. That. So, Mr. Higg on the right, we were here um, too. That you're looking at right now, I have it under it. What is that type of powder? It's a pistol powder, in my opinion. It's one called Trail Boss. That's a brand name designed for cowboy action loads in handgun, centerfire handgun cartridges. And it's characteristic shape. As I say, it looks like little donuts or tires if you magnify it. And it's a, a dull gray. It's also what's called a single base powder. Uh, I, I use it myself. It's, it's an old friend. It works well. Okay, sir. Now I'm going to move this over. And I'm going to show you the the trail boss is an old of friend of, and of what this do you call man, that type Amy. Of I don't know of the many physical forms. It's called disc flake. That's with a hyphen disc flake. It's little flakes in the sharp shape of discs, like little gray hockey pucks under the microscope. And without a scale, I couldn't compare that any further to say bullseye or some of the other disc flake powders. Okay. And now I'm going to try to zoom in here. Um, do you see 
in the middle of the the ones you just described, you see that donut looking shape. Oh, Rob Smith, we're not we're not judging oh, whether no. you hand load your I own ammo it. or not. I don't see it as a powder particle. It's something in the, um, the holding device. They just never explained what it was. And by holding device, what do you mean by that? Which was kind of frustrating. So thank I you don't know. for I the insight. I didn't have benefit of having this in my hand to actually empty it out, as I recall. We we just don't we don't want to trust somebody powder. else's load. You never know where it's been. I don't think it's powder. I'm convinced it is not a propellant or powder. Okay, but you don't recall that particular thing when you looked at it or when you when you had it, or what did you just say? I didn't understand. If I looked at it, I was again firsthand. I was again interested in the propellant as to whether I could identify it on the basis of morphology, and I, I didn't get anywhere beyond it's a disc flake powder popularly used in pistol cartridges, handgun cartridges. He can't okay. tell you exactly so what the manufacturer is. So as part of your work is. in this case, did you ever see the photographs from PDQ Props from Seth Kenny's business? I know I saw a number of photographs after a, a production of materials there, search one, I suppose you call it, and a lot of the ammunition. Maddox, Mickey, they the weren't FBI supposed to mix their loads. We heard about that, that yesterday facility. from the FBI. Did you remember the, the um, FBI said no that mixed loads in terms of its organization or disorganization? Only vaguely. All right, and it may, we may show you some pictures of that, but you never went there personally. I have not been there. Okay, and you've had no contact with Seth Kenny yourself. That's also correct. I, I don't know the man. I've not met him. Okay. Did uh, you, Chris, with regard I to the rounds on set, did you lots and lots um, of measure here. or inspect all of the rounds? For example, we've been evidence there's been 250 dummy rounds. Did you go through all of those over a period of five days? Yes. Okay, and did you go through um, all of the the live rounds? You said yes, definitely. Okay. Looked at the all disassembled, but five rounds. Okay. And other than what you've told us, uh, anything else about those live rounds? You did tell us the blue loop. Any other uh, matters that you investigated that you determined about those? They're saying well, loop so fast it sounds morning. like loop. I, those are hard cast, meaning the lead has been hardened. It's not dead soft lead like uh, you get out of an x-ray machine. Cast bullets. There's another way you can make bullets that the manufacturers do, but casting with a mold, bullet mold. Uh, and yes, I, I now must recall the propellant in the disassembled live rounds Looked like the powder I mentioned, bullseye, and I didn't see that in other other sources in this case. Now, sir, do you, uh, can you tell the jury what a light strike misfire is? If that term's familiar to you? Yes, I'd usually separate the terms, but let's just start with a, a misfire. Is a cartridge fails to fire for some reason? A light strike could be one of those reasons. That means the hammer didn't I fall. I really like how distance, thorough he is in his or answers. It was uh, retarded by something. Uh, uh, it was going to fall, but something got caught up in stuck it. in it uh, or the example I gave earlier and I did it with the actual evidence gun pull the hammer back with real ammunition pull the hammer back to the quarter cock that little distance where the safety would set but I had the trigger depressed and then let the hammer fall that would make it'd be actually hard to see a little tick mark t-i-c-k a little tick mark in the primer but it wouldn't fire it and and observing that after that happened if you observe that round and you can see that little strike in the primer um, is it true that, that that round could still go off the next the next hit? Yes. If it didn't fire and a primer had a tick mark, one of these little light indentations in it, and you put it back in the firearm and drew the hammer all the way back, it's, it's going to fire. Okay. And so one other area on the, you mentioned yes, that the gun this barrel. This expert is experting at an expert it was, level. Uh, it was dirty. Well, it had to be dirty when the evidence bullet went down the barrel. Okay. I'm but, so glad they circled back to this. I was so surprised. I'm actually kind of surprised the defense is getting into it, but I'm glad. I'm so surprised that the prosecution didn't get back to the state of the barrel of the gun because he was talking about the fact that the state of the barrel of the gun was not good and that the markings on the FBI test rounds that were fired showed that there was something going on with the barrel of the gun. I thought that the prosecution would circle back to that. I'm surprised that the defense is because it's her job to keep the barrel clean. And let me just ask you, does it take some time for an individual to properly clean a gun that's been uh, firing black powder? Uh, whether black powder, uh, I saw no evidence of black powder was used in this case, but I know what you mean. There's a substitute called triple seven, uh, which acts like black powder. They both leave a lot of residue in the gun barrel and it can be difficult to get out, especially if you don't know what you're doing because it's largely water soluble and modern powders like you just showed me in the picture are not water soluble. So you need to know, okay, this is triple seven or black gunpowder, and I've got to get this stuff out. You, you're going to have to scrub it out with soap, hot, soapy water is the best way, and then dry the gun barrel out. Okay, sir, and I know you, I appreciate that. I know you operate a business. Were you paid or compensated in this case for your work? 
for my time, of course. Yes, sir. And how much uh, have you been compensated? Tiffany, it makes us well, love my you wife more. handles the bookkeeping, so I don't, I don't know for sure. But there's been quite a few hours. I said five me. days just looking at all this evidence I, alone. I, I don't and know. Another one I came over here in July to look at the clothing. And then in August for the videos you saw. So there's five, six, seven, seven. Are you being paid? Days. Yes. And, and what's your hourly rate? 300. Are you being paid? Yes. How much have you been paid? Ask my wife. <laughs> 50 per hour. Okay. Okay. And I, 350 yeah, seems low for his level of expertise. I'm just saying. It, and by low, I mean, that is a low to reasonable rate. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have balked at him being paid double that. Mr. Haig, did you look at all of the Can we just call disassembled the live rounds from the set of rust? Yes. Did any of the primers on those live rounds have those tick marks? No. And just to be clear, when we were looking at photos earlier, the, the photo of the ammunition that came from PDQ props, you described that bullet as a semi wad cutter. Yes. Okay. Um, and can you definitively say that the live rounds from the set of rust were kind of homemade sort of reloads as opposed to yeah. the HSM brand that we looked at on the, on the photos that you, you okay. are purchased? homemade reloads and yeah, hand loads, the same thing, the ammo to ammunition to that degree. There's just a it's subtle, but if you shoot all the time and load ammunition, I recognize them as in all likelihood hand loads. I wouldn't describe them as shoddy or poorly made or, uh, Sometimes I'll see dents in cartridge cases and the bullet's been improperly seated. So nothing wrong with them. They look like perfectly suitable handles. I've seen prettier. I'm sure seen a lot worse. Are you, I, I just want to be clear. Are you testifying to the jury? I didn't know some hand loads could be pretty believe, and some aren't. Uh, that those rounds that were found on the set would have come from a small manufacturer like HSM. I can't rule it out, but the, the ammunition I've purchased in 45 Colt from various manufacturers and those that my younger son, Mike has purchased have a higher quality. The bullets are slicker, shinier. Okay. Um, and you were asked some questions on cross-examination about uh, gun safety and, uh, and, and Mr. Baldwin having his, his finger in the, in the trigger guard of that gun. You recall those questions? I do. Based on your review of the evidence in this case, is it your understanding that Mr. Baldwin was told that the gun was cold or inert before he put his finger in the trigger guard? Yes, it's my understanding from reading the documents, the call cold gun was given, meaning there's a gun on the set. Chad, there's I'm going to need to ask you guys what they've go, said more, going to fire. Clock or no bald blanks, or of course, live rounds. And you know whose name I haven't heard a lot today is Gutierrez. Case, uh, that, that rattled, you examined some of those, didn't you? Yes, I did a number of them. Do you mind my asking, sir, how old you are? 83. And really? sir, with your 83 year old ears, sir. are you able to clearly hear the rattle? I would not, not guessed he was not especially, especially in my right ear. Okay. Yeah. Um, shooting ear. Do you think do that, that do you think that's a, an issue with your hearing? I thought it was subtle even when I listened with my good ear, my left ear. The rattle was subtle. Yes. So in order to in order to hear that rattle, you have to listen pretty closely, right? Yes, and it gets more complicated. Some of them had one pellet in them, others had two or three. So now you've got the advantage if you happen to pull one that's got three in it, better opportunity to hear it rattle. Okay. Uh, sir, are you familiar with the term uh, inertia bullet puller? Sure. Can you tell us what? How is that not outside the scope of cross? I also very much want to know what an inertia bullet puller is because it sounds like something from Doctor Who, but I'm shocked that he's 83. I want to know his tricks. I want to know his tricks, sir. You, you are incredible. For... Great. Yes, it's a very simple device. It looks a little bit like a hammer, only it's clear plastic. It's got a cap. And you put a usually a live cartridge or maybe one that's failed Ginger to fire. Anyway, it's a cartridge. Is there it's got a, a cock cartridge counter, case, though? Primer. We might need that. Put too. it in this device and you hit it. But on they've a hard said surface. Baldwin so much. Good old Isaac Newton works out for us. The hammer stops and the heavy bullet keeps on going. Now it may take three or four hits, but you separate the bullet from the cartridge in a non destructive way. So you get the bullet, you get all the powder, and you get a cartridge case. It's pretty routine if we want to know. What's this ammunition loaded with? How much powder? What kind of bullet? Because we can't see all the bullet when it's in the cartridge case. So it's a common tool. I think I have two or three of them. So the inertia puller is, is a device that is uh, designed to disassemble live ammunition. Is I don't know right? how this yes. isn't outside the thank scope. You, sir. Of... I don't have anything else. Her... All right, thank you, sir. Her redirect Excuse frustrates you. me as they yes, change yes. witnesses. Uh, we will call uh, Corporal Alex Hancock. Hancock. Oh, this is going to be the rest of the day then, probably with the lead, uh, the lead law enforcement officer. 
But the thing that frustrates me about this attorney's redirect is she leaves things that should be in direct examination for redirect and the defense isn't clocking her on it and objecting to it. But when she got into the inertia puller, the defense could have easily said, um, yeah, that's outside the scope. Swear firm under All right. Law now we're going to hear from Hancock. I think Hancock is the lead investigator. All right. Thank you. Have a Hello, Madam Hancock. Detective Hancock, go ahead and state your name for the record. Uh, Alexandra Hancock. How are you currently employed? I am currently a corporal with the Seneca County Sheriff's Office. The cock counter is, okay. is done because her name is also Hancock. It's just... How long have you been employed at the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office? A little over six years now. And it, it, have, have you only worked at the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office? Yes. Okay. Um, on October 21st, 2021, um, chat, what was your position with the department? Ma'am, chat um, wants so to know if you have any October relation to Wild Bill. I was a detective in the Criminal Investigations Division, and I was assigned to the Violent Crimes Division. And how did you become involved in this case? Uh, I became involved in the um, rest case. We were working that day and in the office and um, got notified that there was a shooting on a movie set. And when you received that information, what did you do? Um, so we met um, essentially as a team in investigations. And at that point, we had essentially split up assignments. Um, we do this with any sort of major case, like a homicide, um, shooting, stabbing, anything like that. Um, so we'll meet with the supervisors and then the entire team. And then at that point, we'll divvy up essentially who's going to do what at that time. Tell okay. us how you divvied things up. So um, at the initial point of this case, um, there was actually another detective that was assigned the primary. Um, and I was assigned as secondary. So what that means is that um, the primary is pretty much the head of the investigation. Um, they're essentially in charge of what's going to happen, and then they divvy up uh, responsibilities for the rest of the team from there. And who was that person who was originally assigned primary? His name was Joel Connell. And is he a colleague of yours? Yes, yes. So uh, did you and, become and at primary? some point, uh, was that designation, designation changed, and were you assigned to primary? Yes, about two weeks later. Um, on October... 21st, just so that we understand who was doing what. Um, can you give us the names of the people that you yourself uh, interviewed on the 21st of October? Yeah, so the day of the incident, I was assigned to um, take some individuals back to the sheriff's office to be interviewed. Um, those individuals involved Hannah Gutierrez Reed, who is um, here in the courtroom today, um, David Halls, and Alec Baldwin. And those are the three people who ultimately were criminally charged in this case, correct? That is correct. Uh, would you agree with me that you did the, basically the primary interviews on October 21st? Yes. And so while you were interviewing kind of the main players on October 21st, what was Detective Kano doing? Um, so Detective Kano had stayed um, on at the ranch. I think she the had the a ranch. chat on when and, she did the Baldwin um, interview. It was my understanding that there were additional people who were inside of the there were two of them that the interviewed the Baldwin. Happened, that he had interviewed um, and had assistance from another detective. So essentially they stayed on scene and used a um, like a movie trailer or whatever was designated towards them to interview all those other people. And why were you guys interviewing people at the same time? You in one location, him in another location? Uh, because of the uh, amount of people that we had to interview. And at the sheriff's office, we only have one interview room. Now, you were present in the courtroom that, well, that, uh, when that would be why. Um, Officer Lafleur and Mr. Benavides uh, testified. Do you recall that? Yes. Um, what's your opinion with regard to their sentiments that this was a difficult scene because of the number of people it was a difficult scene yeah the um i would say it was it produced a pretty big problem for the sheriff's office just because of the fact that there were so many people um on this movie scene uh, hundreds of people and there were so few of us at the time now in addition to interviewing uh mr baldwin ms gutierrez and mr halls on october 21st 2021 did you also conduct a subsequent interview with ms gutierrez yes i did and was her attorney, Mr. Bowles, present for that interview? Yes, he was. And did you have uh, numerous subsequent telephone conversations with Mr. Baldwin? Yes, quite a few. 
Um, at any point in time after October 21st, did you uh, conduct an interview of a witness by the name of Sarah Zachary? Yes, I did handle um, her initial interview was with Detective Connell. We're going to see some of the interviews today. And then I had a interview with her sometime in November. We might not. And we did you also Hannah conduct today. an interview with an actor by the name of Jensen Ackles? Yes, I did. Did you what? conduct an interview? What did you just call Jensen, ma'am? Okay, ma'am. I mispronounce shit all the time, but there are some things. There are some things. With uh, the witness that we heard from uh, earlier, but I hope uh, we'll Catherine see Hannah's Walters. interview. Yes. And did you interview That's a gentleman by the name of Zach Sills? Yes. And she's going to lay foundation for the Did you interview a gentleman the by the name of Seth Kinney? Uh, numerous times. And when you say numerous times, how many times do you think you spoke to Mr. Kinney? Over five. And why um, is it in charge? did you interview Sorry. a gentleman Sorry. by the name of Thel Reed? Yes, I did. It. Do you know who Thel Reed is? Because I the Let's jury start doesn't... with... Um, Mr. Reed, yes, she got how, to how did you Jensen. come to conduct an interview? And, and just to be clear, I think it was telephonic. Is that right? Yes, it was. How did you come to conduct an interview with Mr. Reed? So my initial, um, I guess the way that I had originally heard about uh, Mr. Thel Reed was that he was Hannah's father. And um, Jason Bowles, Hannah's attorney, had actually brought him up um, after a, the second interview that I had conducted with Hannah. Um, essentially saying that Thel wanted to provide a statement as to where the live ammunition may have come from on set. Um, Jason had emailed me a... When you say Jason, you mean Jason Bowles? Yes, Jason Bowles. Had um, emailed me a typed out statement. Um, and at the bottom of this statement, it had Thel's name on it. Um, at that time, I had advised to Jason that that would not be a sufficient statement for me um, because I hadn't conducted the interview um, myself and that essentially a, a word typed statement, um, not signed, not really identified from anybody would not be sufficient for me. Um, so I chat, I will, I will remind you guys, cause I see a lot of you talking about her body language. I have this sped up. So all of that is going to be exaggerated because I have that sped up, but I'm very interested in the fact that the defense came to her and was like, this is how the ammo got on set. This is her father. You need to talk about her. So, um, the, the movement is because I have this sped up. Had discussed with Mr. Jason Bowles that if Thel wanted to provide an actual statement to me that we needed to set up an interview. Yeah. And did he do that? Yes, he did the following day. Fascinating. And did you interview him? Yes. Was that prior prior to um, uh, asking the court to authorize a search warrant on PDQ props? Yeah, it was about a week before. I hope they um, ask this and question. Under what circumstances did you become aware of Seth Kinney in, in, a, in a manner that caused you to start to have to interview him and interact with him? Um, so from the, be the beginning of the investigation, my first interactions with Seth Kenny um, came from the search warrant that we had done on the prop truck, um, which was on the, the set of rust. Um, Seth had, I had essentially told Seth or had communications with him that I was going to need to get inside the safe on the, on the prop truck, which is where um, we were told that they had um, stored guns. And instead of breaking it's open nice the safe, there was a safe on um, the we truck. had asked for someone to come to set with the code for the safe That's respectful. Um, in order to open it so we didn't have to do all that extra work. So my first interaction oh, um, in person with Seth Kenny was the doing the prop truck search warrant. I thought it was because you didn't want to damage um, the safe because that's second. like uh, not so, urgent. So Mr. Kenny showed up and opened the safe for you. Yes, he did. Uh, and on that day that you were doing the search of the prop truck, do you recall what date it was? It was October 27th, 2021. Um, and, and did Mr. Kinney uh, kind of hang around there uh, outside the prop truck and you were able to visit with him? Yes. Was Mr. Kinney cooperative with you? Yeah, he was extremely cooperative. Um, did Mr. Kinney bring you samples of live ammunition I mean, from PDQ props? I mean, yes, he did. Fair. And did Mr. Kinney provide you access to text messages on his cell phone? Uh, yes, several times. Did he provide you access to information on his tablet? He yes. provided the props. What was the reason 
or reasons rather that oh, you breathing on the mic. determined I'm like, who is breathing that on the mic? conducting a search of PDQ props would be appropriate? Um, so throughout the investigation, um, we obviously had the unanswered question of where this live, live ammunition may have come from. Yeah, same. Um, during Sorry, Hannah's fail. secondary interview same. with me, um, I found that ammunition that was supplied to Rust actually came from three different sources. Um, one of those sources, and, 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 and let's let, let's back up real quick. No, 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 no. Let's not back up. Ammo on the set of Rust came from three different sources. I don't want to back the fuck up. We have been waiting for the answer to this question. Before you get there, the interview yeah. that you did with Ms. Gutierrez on October 21st, 2021. Um, did you have a conversation with her about who provided ammunition to the set? I'm going to yes. slow this down. And who did she say provided ammunition? Seth Kenny. And then you conducted a follow up interview with her uh, in November. Yes. And that was when Mr. Bowles was there. Correct. And that's what you were going to start telling us about, right? Yes. Go ahead, proceed. Um, so in that secondary interview, um, Hannah had disclosed that there were actually three sources of ammunition um, Tell us. that went onto the set of Rust. One of them, her original being Seth Kenny um, from PDQ, Armand Prop. The second supplier was an individual named Billy Ray, um, and he was part of the business uh, Spots and Props, I believe it. Where did Billy was. Ray get? And then the third um, source of ammunition for Rust was herself. How many boxes oh. of dummy ammunition did Ms. Gutierrez tell you that she herself provided to the set of Rust? Uh, so one, and then she had stated that she had brought other um, dummies and ammunition in gun belts. This is why I like speeding it up, okay. but I needed to hear uh, it. So I think what we were discussing is what went into your thought process that caused you uh, to decide that executing a search warrant on PDQ prop props would be appropriate. Yeah, so during Hannah's secondary interview, um, it was identified at that point uh, the actual physical location of PDQ, um, which was in Albuquerque, the 126 Monroe. Um, and then subsequently after that, when I had gotten the statement from Thel, Thel had described that him and Seth Kenny had been training actors on another movie prior to this in another state Yellowstone. Um, that they had used live ammunition. Yellowstone 1883. Um, and so Thel had said that that ammunition somehow came back to New Mexico and then, you know, potentially gone back to PDQ, which is the reason that I used along with Seth Kenny providing the fact that he did have live ammunition and use live ammunition um, on that set to draft that search warrant for PDQ. Did you also have numerous conversations with Mr. Bowles? Yes. Um, and were some of the statements that Mr. Bowles made also uh, things that went into your decision to execute a search warrant there? Yes. What was the information you received from Mr. Bowles that caused you to turn your attention to Seth Kinney? Um, so from the uh, beginning of this investigation, um, Mr. Bowles had made statements that he believed that there was sabotage on the set, um, although none of the huh. individuals that I had interviewed um, know that this has been the shared the same thought. sentiment. So... It was in their None lawsuit. of the people that I had interviewed Against thought Seth that Kenny. this could be sabotage or, um, you know, that someone did this intentionally to Hannah. And so given the fact that Mr. Bowles had continuously um, told me about, you know, Seth Kenny and the fact that he may have supplied the live ammunition um, and that he was a supplier of ammunition is why we decided to take that path into investigating him. Um, now, the interview that you conducted with Mr. Reed that went into your decision 
uh, to apply for a search warrant. Um, did Mr. Reed actually tell you specifically the kind of rounds that he recalled being on the set of 1883 that would now be in the possession of Seth Kinney? Yeah, he described the um, live ammunition to have a, a semi-wad cutter top. All right. So the live ammo was a semi-wad cutter. <clears throat> Um, Corporal, were you present in the courtroom for opening statements? Yes. Um, Those aren't evidence, counsel. What are you, what are you doing? Did you investigate Seth Kinney? Yes, we did. And based on Mr. Bowles's communications with you and other information, you I'm actually applied interested. for a search warrant and you conducted a search of PDQ props, correct? Yes, I did. And you spoke to Mr. Kinney numerous times, I think you testified to. Many, many times. And he was completely cooperative with you? Yes, for over a year, I believe. And in, sorry, and? I was just going to say, we, we had numerous conversations for an extended period of time. Um, is there any particular reason that you didn't ask him for a DNA swab or a fingerprint sample? Good questions. I have those questions. Um, yes. So during my investigation um, and the interviews I conducted, oh, so much um, there was never any so much leading. testimony or reason to believe um, that Seth was ever on the set of Rust. Not Mr. Kinney. Anything Seth. that was... He provided um, handled things to through the him set. or any of the ammunition or anything that had been brought to set had been picked up by another person in Albuquerque or they had met outside of the set. Um, okay. And, and just to be clear, Corporal, the, the live ammunition that you seized from PDQ props, what did you do with it? Uh, we submitted all the live ammunition for testing with the FBI. And did you receive information that the live ammunition from PDQ didn't match the live ammunition on the set of Rust? That's correct. It didn't match at all. And isn't that in line with what Thel Reed himself told you about that ammunition being semi-wad cutter? Yeah, so the statement that Thel had made um, about the type of ammunition that they were using matched what we found and what was provided by Seth Kenny. So you found at PDQ exactly what Thel Reed told you you should find? Yes. And it did not match the live rounds on set? That's correct. She did tie it together, which is helpful. It's Yes, it's all leading. Let's talk about it's all, it's um, all leading. the, the defense isn't objecting. It's all leading. Cell phone extractions that were done in this case. And let's go back to October 21st. Let's go back to 1.25 on, on the set of rust. Let's go. Let's go back to that. Because um, do you know why cause it's cell better. phones from every witness on the set weren't collected? Um, there was, I mean, obviously a lot of people that we were dealing with and um, it's not we didn't have standard warrants. practice especially when we are still investigating to just go and take people's possessions from them. If I'm a witness the to Constitution a crime, says do you, you just get to come seize my cell phone? No. Do you get to put me in handcuffs? No. Do you get to put me in the back of a patrol unit? No. Um, yes. In fact, if it feels like cross-examination, it's because they're leading. There was a, an extraction of Ms. Gutierrez's cell Some phone. Some of them are correct? direct. That's correct. And you didn't have to ask for a warrant. She consented to that. She did consent. And was there an extraction done of Mr. Baldwin's phone? Yes. And where was that done? Um, Suffolk, Suffolk PD in New York completed it. And did Mr. Baldwin do that voluntarily or did you have to execute a warrant? So I had initially applied for a warrant for his phone um, and it was approved here in New Mexico, but he was located in New York at the time. And so we ended up, um, actually the DA's office and Mr. Baldwin's attorneys um, ended up Essentially, we were getting his phone and doing his phone on consent as well. It was all in the media. Uh, it was a cell phone extraction done of the cell phone of Mr. Halls. Yes, it was. 
And did you have to get a warrant or did Mr. Hull's consent? He consented. Uh, same thing with Ms. Zachary. Was there an extraction of her phone? Yes. Did she consent? Yes, she did. And Mr. Kinney shared with you the information from his phone that you asked for? Yes, numerous times. Is there a reason that the prop truck wasn't searched until October 27th? Yes. Yeah, so um, with the initial information that we had been given um, and that we responded to the day of the incident, um, the entire incident in itself had occurred inside the church. Um, so that was our primary you know privacy. primary area that we were going to be investigating and processing and looking into because that's where the incident occurred um and ad additional information that we had received was obviously involving the prop cart that hannah um and the props team was using and that's why we um you know processed that prop cart as well uh, we didn't have information until later on that this prop truck had been involved in the props department and that we would potentially need to be looking for evidence there, which is why we didn't um, conduct that search until a few days later. And Corporal, why wasn't the search of PDQ props done until the end of November? Because the information that I had started um, receiving in terms of PDQ didn't come until, I believe it was November 9th, um, the statement that I was given uh, from Thel or my interview with Thel Reed was November 17th. Um, I, we had also um, received some evidence back from OMI November 22nd. And then I had another interview um, with Sarah, her secondary interview on November 29th. So this is all stuff that I'm involved in and I'm conducting and doing myself. So November 30th was essentially the first day that I had available to do that search warrant and I requested the search warrant that morning and got it done that afternoon. Do criminal investigations involving 100 witnesses sometimes take time? Absolutely, even ones that don't involve that many people. Um, can you explain to the jury uh, why latent fingerprint testing was not requested on the live rounds found on the set of rest? Yeah, absolutely. So during uh, my interviews with um, you know, all the people that were that I initially interviewed, there was um, statements from them that this the gun that Alec Baldwin was using was taken from the church, um, that Dave Halls had taken it from the church, that he had handed that gun to Miss Reed, um, directed Miss Reed to essentially empty all the bullets from that gun. So in doing so, with Miss Reed emptying the bullets and examining them at that time, I know she touched them. I know her DNA or potentially her prints are gonna be on those bullets. Um, so it didn't make sense for us to DNA or latent test that round because I know who touched it and she wasn't the only one that touched it after that. Um, in addition to that, the other live rounds that were found um, in you know gun belts, the box or the ammo box and the carts um, had all been handled by several people during this movie set, especially after the shooting, we I got I had gotten statements that they had been handled by several different people. After and not the only shooting, that, which is but the gun belts questions. that contained the live ammunition were said to have come from another set. And so, for us, and in speaking with the DA's office as well as the FBI, um, our representative from the FBI, it didn't make sense. It would be a test that just wouldn't yield anything um, that we were looking for. Of evidentiary value. And why wasn't DNA testing requested on the live rounds or the spent casing? I also thought Sarah emptied the gun. The, we'll the have spent to from, see. The gun? From, from, the, from the set, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, the spent casing from the gun or the live rounds from the set of rest. My apologies. I'm sorry, you're saying why, why wasn't it? Why wasn't DNA testing requested? <sighs> okay, um, essentially for the same reason, because of um, one, well, because of all the various people that had claimed to handle these rounds. And did you also hear in previous testimony uh, that, uh, about FBI policies? Yes. A and, and were you uh, notified of those policies during the course of your investigation? Yes, I was. So if you had requested it, they would have refused? Correct, and we did have that discussion with our FBI representative who was assigned to the case here in Santa Fe. 
Now, we understand from previous testimony that you sent the gun that was being used by Mr. Baldwin to the FBI for testing. Is that correct? Yes, we did. I have lots and of questions prior about this to testimony. The testing being done with the mallet, um, were you notified that that testing could potentially result in damage to the gun? Yes. And what was the reason and... that you proceeded with the testing anyway? We proceeded with the testing because Mr. Baldwin had made statements um, that he didn't pull the trigger. And I think his exact statement was that the gun just went off. Hi, um, Thank so you. we needed to figure out how to disprove that theory um, or that statement. And that was the well, way that was proposed case. to us and what the FBI could do. Um, Excuse me, FBI. He said it, FBI, FBI. He said it just went off. Can you disprove that? And the FBI came back to them with, how about we hit it with a hammer? I still am flabbergasted that this is their standard operating procedure. Again, I am not a forensic examiner, but it just, the, how about we hit it with a hammer being the thing always surprises me. But this was all based on Baldwin. On October, I, I, I'm going to go through and I'm going to play some videos of your statements with Ms. Gutierrez at Great. this time. Um, and on October 21st, 2021, snacks. did we you have, have a videos. conversation with Ms. Gutierrez when she was still on set before she was taken to the police station? Yeah, we had some, some brief discussion. Okay. Tell me all the things. And Your, your Honor, if it's acceptable, some of these videos, the first one isn't that long, but some of these videos are rather lengthy. And so I'd like to play them from counsel's table sure. instead of standing. Okay. How, how long are they? Um, the first one I think is about eight minutes. The second one off the top of my head, I want to say is about an hour. And the last one is between two and three hours. All right. We'll probably take a break after the second one, the one that's an hour. Okay. And class. Hi class. We're, uh, we're doing videos for the rest of the day, which is great. Cause in a little bit, I do have to leave for an appointment for my neck. Um, so I am literally going to leave you with videos with videos on. So that's what we're doing class. The rest of the day we're watching videos. How exciting for us. I have not watched these. Um, I watched Baldwin's police interview, Baldwin's 2020 interview. I have not watched Hannah's interview. I have not watched Jensen's interview. Um, so we're going to do videos the rest of the day. But when we do that, I will leave uh, I will leave trial running for completeness. I will leave chat running. The mods will be here. Miguelina will be here. You guys are being good hands to watch this together in community. But yes, um, we have just wheeled in the video cart. I'm going to answer some questions while we're waiting for the tech to work. Just, uh, just as a point of clarification for the court and also for the jury, um, uh, some of these videos are, are at times redacted if there's downtime or something like that. So if you see a skip, that's why. Okay, so I'm okay. evidence. Yes, and the, the first Thank you one for the that, that I intend to play is States Exhibit 66. Um, I would ask to admit it and publish it. Exhibit 66, well, not Order 66. Exhibit 66. Question, can defense bring up the fact that prosecution offered a deal to the safety manager when he testifies, it'll come up? Dave Halls. When Dave Halls testifies, it'll come up. Um... Wait a second. Why do we have no audio? Yeah, where's the rest of it? Thank you. Just going to back up. Yeah, where's the rest of it? Okay. This is on the set. Um, Corporal, does this, does this microphone work? Okay. Uh, the acoustics are much different from this position. Um, yeah. Corporal, who was that gentleman you were speaking to? Uh, that was my sergeant at the time, Christopher Zook. That's the same gentleman that testified earlier in this trial? Yes. And, and what are you being asked to do? Um, I was advised that Hannah needed to use the restroom and um, that she wanted somebody to accompany her. Uh, Mustang Mickey? After her? Yeah. She addressed that a little earlier. I hope it answered your question. She found no evidence of that. So it was addressed. It's a Hi defense there. theory. Is it, you need to use the restroom? Yeah. Okay, I can go with you. I definitely had law enforcement that forgot to cut off their body cam when they went to the restroom. She's not, she'll just come right back here. Yeah, I'm just speaking her to use the restroom and that's it. Let me just close this. But. Okay, where are they? Do I have to do this? Can you guys just have to leave? Well, yeah, so we're gonna take you, do you wanna wait to go to the office or? Is it gonna be a while? 
Um, I'm not sure how much longer. I'd say not too much longer, but I can't tell you a time. Okay. And Corporal, I couldn't hear what Ms. Gutierrez uh, said to you at, at the beginning that prompted this discussion about going back to the office. Do you recall? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, no problem. <laughs> the worst day of my life. Okay, <laughs> uh, hey, things happen. Yeah. Where's your restrooms here? Right over here. Okay. I think Hannah said, this is the worst day of my life. And the detective said, things happen? I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure we're at normal speed. Um, because I think the videos are important, but I think that's what we just heard. And I'm like, oh, okay. Tell, chat, tell me if that's what if that's what you hear. Welcome to the worst day of my life. <laughs> uh, hey, things happen. Yeah. Where's your restrooms here? Right and here. she okay. can't. She can't really elicit a response for her. She's not. She can't. She's not interviewing her yet. I don't know what else she can say other than I'm sorry for that. That's all right. Just she's saying I can't. Can the members it. of the jury hear what Ms. Gutierrez is saying in the video? Is she asking okay. the jury and not the judge? She said no. One person said no. I don't see it. Okay. Um, could you, Corporal? Could she's. T you don't talk directly to the jury, Your Honor. Can you ask if the ladies and gentlemen of the jury can hear? Instead of saying. Can you hear? And one of them saying, "No, I can't." She, she's talking to. She's talking directly to the. Did you hear what Miss Gutierrez was saying in the video? Yes. Can, can, can you? Uh, did we just turn it up? Can you hear okay. okay. I'll take it back. Just. A, I think just she a is trying to keep Hannah calm. We'll, uh, we'll see if that works. Thank you, George. This is special. They do not know Helena had passed at this point. They do not. Okay. I can't believe Alec Baldwin was holding the gun. That's so far. What did Ms. Gutierrez say to you? I can't believe Alec Baldwin um, was, so was holding the gun. That's so fucked. I can't believe Alec Baldwin was holding the gun. That's so fucked. And just to be clear, at this point in time, um, where's Ms. Hutchins? Um, I believe she's still in the, uh, uh, the care flight, the helicopter. And, um, you saw the, the previous videos, uh, the, the video from Mr. Benavides. Do you recall seeing that? Yes. Okay. Um, and, and in that video, uh, did Ms. Gutierrez learn that Ms. Hutchins was critical but stable? Yes. That's all right. Just take a deep breath and we'll work this all out, okay? The statement about Baldwin is what it is, but I wonder if she's... I wonder how defense is going to address that. And if she testifies, what she'll say. If she's scared of Baldwin. Oh, uh, I think that If him being the lead actor is a consideration. Yeah, I'm just going to stand facing opposite, okay? And Corporal, why do you need to uh, escort Ms. Gutierrez to the restroom? Uh, she had actually asked to be escorted by law enforcement, which is why I was with her. Um, we take Why? it as a precaution to accompany people into the restroom um, just to, I guess, ensure um, that they don't harm themselves, that they're not trying to um, hide evidence, such things like that. I mean, if the prosecution is correct, and if Hannah Gutierrez Reed did have narcotics on her at this point, Dumping it in the toilet would seem like the thing to do. I'm just saying it would it would be the thing to do. <clears throat> you guys have a lot of people out here. Yeah, it's 
Is there like a closer comp car you guys can put me in or something? Um, I mean, the closest one that I can put you in is one of the ones that's like the unmarked one. I just kind of wish that any of my coworkers could stop seeing me because I already feel super bad. Okay. Yeah. Okay, hold on just one second. I can even throw you in mine. I have an unmarked one. Um, Is it closed? It's like right. It's we walked through them. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I just I don't want to go back. Okay. I just want to get the fuck out of here and never show my face in this industry ever again. Well, I wouldn't say that. Oh, I would. How long have you been uh, working here? <laughs> I just want to get the fuck out of here and never show my face in this industry again, is what she just said. No, just a month. Just a month? Yeah. I've just been doing this. Show. How long have you been working in this industry? A month. This is all body cam. This is all being filmed on body cam because they're still talking. A month. Down for like nine months now. Okay. How old are you? 24. Oh, a month on this I'm set. Like the only female armor in the game, and I just fucked up my whole entire career. Have you uh, studied armory? Or? Well, that's an admission. Um, I'm the only female armor in the game, and I just fucked up my entire career. That's why they're still recording because she's still talking. 24. I'm like the only female armor in the game, and I just fucked up my whole entire career. Have you uh, studied armory or did you go to classes or how did you yeah. get into it? My dad's the best, one of the best armorers in the entire world and he trained me and I'm a fucking failure. Let's hit it. Are you ready? Uh, for those asking in the chat about Miranda, she's not in custody. Um, so this is, this would be considered non-custodial. If there were any motions about it, we would have seen it. We saw no motions to exclude these. So no, she... There is a possibility that she was Mirandized previously, but she's not in custody at this point. They're literally just chatting. Um, even when you're just chatting with police, it can and will be used against you. There's never a just chatting with police on the scene of a crime. Wow, that's a lot. My dad is one of the best yeah, in the game so he trained me this one's actually this and i just fucked everything up car car over here we've no one has seen the body cam footage before in front of that cop car on that thing if you could bring it okay possibly. what's in it just my keys maybe okay uh, oh yes this is definitely yeah, self-snitching figure out let me see yeah, you can just leave it on my inhaler is in it. Okay. Do but you need inhaler, that? My inhaler might be in the back of the car. You know what? Let me... Sorry, we have so much gear. It's handcuff ASMR, folks. Yeah. Like I'm not sure. She's asking about the light. Do you want a Gatorade? Flight. It's not open. It's been I'm all right. Okay. She was asking about the life flight helicopter. So I'll leave that there if you want it, okay? Oh, well, you can control the window. This is the lead detective's body cam. She was not under arrest, not in custody. No Miranda. Don't. No Miranda needed at this time. And they didn't I have to hang out with you here, though, okay? Since my vehicle is... I also didn't see any um, motions regarding these interviews. So, um, she doesn't want to be up in the cop car until they figure out transportation. We just let them know that I have her in here. She doesn't want to be... This is on her? Yeah. Okay. So you're just going to hang out with her here? Yeah, until they figure out what they want to do. But yes. Yeah. So she wants to be transported over there. Yeah, she wants. Uh, right. She, okay. she, exactly. And she just doesn't want to be. Well, she doesn't want everybody to see her right now. Yeah. So she's. I have her back here.
Are you from New Mexico? State, from Arizona. From Arizona, what part? What city, Arizona. I actually don't think I know where that is. The background is so loud, but the prosecution is going to use the all the statements about her fucking everything up to show that she knew that she was wrong. She knew that she was negligent. She knew that she wasn't doing her job. They're going to use these statements to show that before she even sits down and does a formal police interview. She is expressing that she knows that this was her error. Let me know how the temperature is, okay? I can do whatever you need. That's gotta be hard for her to watch, too. Have you called too. your parents or anything yet? Yeah, go ahead. Whoever you need to call. And the body cam footage has not be, been seen before. The police interview has been released. This has not been released. Do you know what's going on? Me and you are going to go to the office. Okay. Uh, it's her. Can I do this? Then they're going to transport her. And then go in and take her off. Weird. So. So, Corporal, at Ms. Gutierrez's request, did you take her to the restroom? Yes. And at her request, did you uh, permit her to sit in your patrol unit? Yes. Did you turn your patrol unit on so that she could be in a comfortable temperature? Yes. Did you allow her full use of her cell phone? Yes, I did. So just to be clear, Ms. Gutierrez's phone wasn't taken either, was it? No, it wasn't. And she's not under arrest at this point. And then later that day, did you do another interview with Ms. Gutierrez at the police station? Yes. I have not yeah. seen this. I'm sure some of you in the chat have. Yes. No spoilers. Uh, we would move into evidence states exhibit 67 and ask for permission to publish. No objection. Part state 67 is admitted. You may publish it. Good God. What the fuck is that audio? Before we get started, um, you're here for an interview, and that's all we're doing right now. Okay, it's just anybody. What happened? Can everybody hear that? Okay, if you can't raise your hand a little bit. Eh, okay. Um, let me let me try to if if I turn it up here, it will go up over there. Okay, let's try that. See if I can fine tune it a little bit. Okay. Um, interview somebody, especially when we do here at the office. George, can you just bump it up another notch and let's see how that works? George, can you make it sound like it's not recorded on a potato? Oh my god. Um, so we have here. Uh, I have in ears. Uh, Oof. Forms. That's what she had here, but I guess she went to go get them. 30 so And uh, And Corporal, where did you go? Uh, I went to go get a um, a form which essentially has Miranda rights on them. And, and who, who's this lady in the room? This was the, um, so her name is Samantha Talamante. She was a detective that I was interviewing with on that day. And does she still work at Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office? Yes, yeah, she's a corporal as well right now. Thank you. Rather well, than the formality, we have to do okay. If law enforcement says to you, it's just a formality, we have to read you your Miranda rights, it's because there is a problem. That, that's what that is. It is a formality, but it's also because you are being interviewed in a custodial setting. Do you know if anyone ever got that fanny pack? Um, so right now it's uh, technically inside the scene. 
So we can't um, quite grab it yet. The fanny pack okay. is inside the scene. But you said it's, it's black and gray? No, it's just the gray one. Just gray, okay. And it was on the cart? Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be, it'll be secure and um, fair enough. It's not part of it. We'll get it back to you as soon as we can. So what did you guys get from Starbucks? Right, I just need to go over and I'll read them to you. And I do, if you understand them, make a signature or check out here. Um, and then read the rest here. And There's some ammo in the fanny pack. I don't know what else is in it, though. And you can use it. It may be used against you in a court of law or other proceedings. You have the right to consult an attorney before making any statements or answering any questions. I can't make the audio less peaky. Sorry, guys. You, during questioning. you may have an attorney appointed to you to represent you if you cannot afford one. Otherwise, obtain, obtain one. Okay. You understand them? And if you wish to... Uh, She's ready to sign. They're not even done with reading them. You kind of like... What do you want to do? I mean, just because the situation and everything, and their attorney already talked to me, and I just I should probably have an attorney represent me. Okay, before you make any statements or talk to us. Do you know what attorney she's referring to? Uh, Is she asking for a lawyer? There was an attorney that was at the ranch, but I don't know her name. Okay. Is she asking for a lawyer? Mm -hmm. Well, I can, I can probably answer a few questions. So at any time, so I'm going to... I should probably have an attorney represent me. No, I can answer a few questions. She just unwound it on her own. Again, you don't have to talk to us. And if you want to touch your attorney, that's fine. If you want to answer some questions, um, you still have, you still could change your mind during this question, right. questioning. So it's up to you. If you want to talk to us and ask That was not an like unequivocal you request. You want your attorney, you can't, but... You need to make the decision on what you want to do right now. If you want to talk to us, how long would it take when you get here, I guess? It's going to be you calling them and finding out. Really? Okay. Oh, no, I don't want to block the uh, detective. I don't know. They're fucking attorney. I don't know. It's just like such a big company, you know. Oh, you're talking about with the production company? Yeah. I don't want this, like, I don't want anything in this case to be fucked up for me. As much as I possibly can. She's worried so, about the attorney for the production you're company. Fine. And it's that's why we go with these. Yeah. You know you're right. Okay. It's up to you. It seems um, like she's asking them what to do. It would be a public defender. They might not they might advise another day. I uh, it's gonna it could go a longer process. I they can't know. advise you. All right. I can answer some basic questions. If you, if you want to answer some basic questions, we could do that. And then if you at some point feel like it's... Right on, yeah. yeah. And like I said, right now we are just interviewing you because you are... You're yeah, law enforcement's not going to say to her, you should definitely get an attorney at this point. They're never going to say that to her. They're not going to be able to say that to her. Also, their goal is for her to talk to them, not to say, don't talk to us. And she's like, she keeps saying, yeah, I can... I don't know what I should do. It seems like she's worried about production and the production company. And then is like, ah, I'll answer a few questions. There, you were there. You are in charge of you know, the- And then she uh, signs the Miranda waiver. So you're okay with talking with us? Yeah. Okay. So, Wait, what's from Starbucks? We'll start, we'll start off with basic questions. Okay. Is anyone going to answer us? So you've already mentioned that you've been on set for five months now. On this particular set? No, on this particular set. I've only been there two weeks. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want the date and time? Oh, yeah, please. It's going to be um, 21. 21. 21. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, how do you spell your first name? Hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H. And your last name? Gutierrez, G-U-T. I E R R E V. When's your date of birth? April 28, 1997. April 28, 97? Yeah. No, yeah, she said she was born in 97. 24. Yeah, I just want you to be comfortable when you're Okay. So they said you've been here for two weeks. Yeah. Um, and this is your primary job is 
handling the armor. Yeah. Baldwin you, was questioned. Um, go into detail about what you do. Um, I put check the guns, and I load the guns, and uh, I hand the guns off to the actor. Okay. Um, how long have you been doing this? Because you mentioned you've been on multiple sets. Um, since about. She said I handed the gun off to the actor. She didn't. She gave it to Dave Halls. March, but I've been here. But she did say, here, she did say I loaded the gun and gave it to the actor. We'll back up if you guys didn't hear that real quick. Um, that just, that's, that's how we know she loaded the gun. I-E-R-R-E-V. When's your date of birth? 28. 97? Yeah. <clears throat> I just want you to be comfortable when you're talking with this, okay? Okay. So they said you've been here for two weeks. Yeah. Um, and this is, your primary job is handling the armor? Yeah. Can you uh, go into detail about what you do? Um, I put, check the guns, and I load the guns, and... Uh, I hand the guns off to the actor. You're right. I check okay. the gun, I load the gun, and I hand it off to the actor describing what her job duties entail. Thank you, chat. That's why I wanted to rewind to see what I heard. How long have you been doing this? Because you mentioned you've been on multiple sets uh, since about March, but I've been handling guns my whole life pretty much. So you're very familiar with guns. And this is your primary function. You go to different sets and you primarily handle these guns. Yeah. Okay. So, can you tell us what happened today when you started work, when you got there to work? Um, yeah, I uh, went to work. We got the guns out. Uh, Who's we? Me, uh, my coworker Sarah, she helped me with the guns a little bit too. Um, yeah. And uh, we got the guns out, we went to set, we had the guns on set, uh, I dummied the guns up with the dummy rounds, and yeah, we were on set all day, no, nothing happened, and then we came back from lunch, and uh, that happened. So you got on set with the gun, with the dummy rounds, about what, about what time? Like 7.30 probably. Around 7.30 this morning? Yeah. I didn't dummy the gun up until about... She does not know Helena no, was killed at this lunch, point. She lunch. does not. They tell her but later... Do you understand what Ms. Gutierrez... They tell her later and they tell Baldwin later in Baldwin's interview too. They have not told her that. There is said ah. that a, a, about something about the gun. Did she say dummy the gun up? Yeah, she had um, said that she dummied the gun up right before lunch. Okay. <laughs> and we take all the guns and we lock them up for lunch. So yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. You and Sarah, what's her last name? Do you know? Sarah's last name. Zachary, it's Zachary. We know uh, this. I don't think she really worked with that gun that day, by the way. So, but. There's Zachary, Z -A -C -A -C. She had to look at her phone contacts. Okay. So just to be clear, did Ms. Gutierrez just tell you that Ms. Zachary didn't really work with the Baldwin gun that day? That's correct. That's correct. But she was there today with you, helping you today, correct? Yeah. Okay. So you and Sarah, who has access to that? So when you got there this morning, were the guns kept? The guns are kept on the prop truck. In the prop truck, and yeah, and the dummies and everything kept on the prop truck. Are the dummy rounds defense absolutely across this video contained than the gun all yeah. in the truck? Yeah, yeah, they're in their own box, and the guns are in the safe. Okay, and who has access to the safe? Sarah and I, just the two of you. Yes, yeah. okay. what about the dummy rounds? Who has access to that? Well, the dummy rounds they were on the the um, cart for lunch. Um, yeah, the dummy rounds were on the cart for lunch. All the ammo was on the cart for lunch. Is there, 
Okay, so you're saying dummy rounds and ammo, are there two separate things? Um, so there's blanks, my bad, not ammo, but there's blanks, you know, uh, the blanks look different. They shoot the stuff and the dummies normally just have a little BB in them. Okay. What is the purpose for the dummy rounds? Because you were loading those up this morning. So first. the dummy rounds, they're meant no, to... No, uh, the defense has had this they're video meant to put in, like, the of the since cowboys they took this case. And and, uh, this is not an issue. I mean, it's an like, issue, but this is not the issue. Where you can see Bullets were not locked so up, correct. If it's empty or not. Right. So, Guns yeah, weren't locked up over lunch either. They're going to be like, looking right at the camera. Oh, okay, so you just for show the dummy rounds are just for show to make it look as full. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then the other rounds that you like. The other round. Being, yeah, the other rounds. Be, yeah. They don't shoot a BB. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. They just shoot like they just open up and a little black powder comes out. And that's all. It's just a little black powder. And yeah. Is there live ammo that's kept on set? No. Never. Okay. okay. So. I hardly even go shooting with 45 ammo at all. I normally just use 22. A big difference. So, but I don't know what that has to do with it. So you you got the guns this morning. You and Sarah are the only ones who have. Is it a combination for the safe? It is. Yeah. Okay, and you guys are the only ones who have that combination. Mm -hmm. The guns are on the cart at lunch, though. Are they're in the truck? Yeah, the truck gets pretty much locked up every night. I mean. Not like padlock, but just on set security. Okay. Um, where do you guys have lunch? Does a lot of people just eat lunch there? Uh, we all leave and we go back to base camp. Okay. And you guys left the dummy rounds and the ammo, but it's not real ammo. My bad. Blanks. The blanks. Yeah, we'll go with blanks. I will use blanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, just so I also don't mix up in the confusion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that they want to be so, clear when they're talking about dummies versus blanks. When they you need to. got the dummy rounds and the blanks this morning, what were you guys doing before lunch? Was that just we were just uh, with the dummies only? Just yeah, just the dummies. Just we were we were just about to get into the blank stuff, and you know, like part of my job is checking the barrel. To make sure nothing's in it, because that's how Brandon Lee died. You what? know. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon. So like that's what I checked for. I definitely checked this. Part of my job is checking and checking the barrel because that's how Brandon Lee died. She is not unaware of what can go wrong on a movie set. Morning, and I was planning on checking again right after lunch before we got into all the shits, and I already started checking uh, the other two guns to check in the. And the same for them, and none of them had any barrel obstructions, so. I was planning on checking yeah. again. So you check the gun, but do you check the blanks and the dummies as well? I do check the dummies. I check all of them, and they all, they all showed that they were not hot, I guess you could say. I do check the dummies. I checked all of them. They shook. They were not hot. She said that she checked all of them. How, how can you tell the difference on um, the ammo, on the dummy rounds, or the blanks? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> how can you tell the difference from the blanks and live, real am ammunition? A little ring. Like there's a little ring in there. It just rings. It rattles. It's like a little rattle. When it's a blank? Yeah, and then also there's ones nope. that I have with holes in the side to show that there's nothing in them. Okay. So what are these ones? They're the rings? Yeah, these ones were the rings. There was one, I think, with a hole. Yeah. Okay. So I want to visit with you a little bit about Ms. Gutierrez's statements up to this point. Um, Initially, Ms. This is a good use of the interview to she stop shook all the dummy ask. rounds, is that right? Yes. And then, uh, upon further that questioning, error. did Ms. Gutierrez tell you that, uh, in fact, um, one of the rounds actually wouldn't have been a, a shaker, it, it had a hole in the side? Correct, which wouldn't give any sort of audible noise if she shook it. 
All right. Um, you put the gun before going to lunch back in the safe. Yeah. But the blanks and dummies were left on the cart. She just said she put the gun in the safe when going to lunch. Earlier in her interview, she said they were on the cart for lunch. Yeah. Did you, when you got back, were they, did they look moved or tampered with or touched when you got back from lunch? They did not. No, nothing, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Okay. Was the gun still in the safe after lunch? Yeah. Who pulled it out? Uh, Sarah pulled it out and she handed it to me. Sarah pulled the gun out of the safe and yeah. gave it to Hannah. Then he watched her. Yeah. What I'm trying to get with is because they, you can handle the gun, you obviously are going to be loading the gun, so that's mm -hmm. why I'm concerned about the dummy and the blanks because those were left out. And if, I, mm -hmm. is there some way that somebody can alter them to make them still look like you're done? Well, so that's the thing is that like bullets, like real bullets, pretty much look the same mm -hmm. as dummies. The only difference is the rattle. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, Thank you, Michael. That could, that's a choice. But also, um, I don't know. I'm kind of wondering because I heard back in the day, dummies. Dummies look the same as live, except the rattle is what she said. Used to have like a primer cap. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if maybe it was one of those older ones or something like that. She should know she's being recorded. Did you load them after lunch interview rooms are they were recorded. already loaded from before lunch okay. and so that's the thing is like you know we had that gun loaded before lunch the whole time before that and it was nothing happened and i wasn't in there and they weren't supposed to be even pulling the hammer back so okay um all right let me just they weren't even supposed to be pulling the hammer back and i wasn't in there yeah I'll clarify a little bit so prior to lunch the gun you had them out yeah. And where were they when, when they were out? They were inside with all the camera crew and everything. It's, you know, COVID, everything happening right now. They don't really like a lot of people in there. Okay. And so usually I'm like hardly allowed in there unless there's actual firing happening. Okay. I'm just going to yeah. say, I don't really give a shit what production says, but if there is a weapon in the church, it seems that the armor should be in the church. Even with COVID precautions, if you can film a movie, it seems like the armor should be in the church. That's just me. Did, were you inside this morning? Uh, I walked in and I handed the gun to Alex a couple of times and Alex took it and everyone was there with him. Alex? Alex. Okay. Baldwin, yeah. Baldwin. Okay, so you handed him the gun this morning. Yeah. Um, does he pass it off to anybody? He, or were you able to see that? At one point, Dave had it. Uh, the assistant director. Had the gun. But he was just sitting in with it and then I saw him and I was like, okay. This is fine. He's just sitting in, and then I walked out, and yeah. And how do you know that Dave had it? I handed it off to Dave while he was sitting in for the shot. Okay. I know the gun um, shouldn't be loaded for rehearsals, but she loaded it and knew it was loaded for rehearsals. She knew it was loaded, which is wild. It shouldn't have right, been. So you guys were the only three handlers prior to lunch? Alec. Uh, Dave, me. Dave was after lunch. Okay, Dave was after lunch. Um, yeah, that should have been the only ones. Um, maybe Sarah, possibly, but yeah. Um, because the other thing they just, they chill on our little table, and we're pretty much there all the time. Okay. And then, so prior to lunch, should they do any um, scenes or anything of the sort where they were firing the weapon? No. Not just before lunch. Handling. Yeah, we were just supposed to get into it right after that. Like literally, that was the last shot before we actually got into blanks. Okay. And those blanks were already loaded in before lunch. No, the no. blanks are different than dummies. Yeah. So that's yeah. yeah, blanks totally different. They actually have like ignition and powder and everything. Dummies, no powder. Just for looks. Just for looks, right? Yeah. So, but yeah, so I think everything was after lunch then. So, mm -hmm. after lunch, you get back, and that's when you loaded a dummy round. I mean, the blanks. No, 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 no. 
No, no blinks are loaded. No, like, oh, no, no today. Yeah, no, okay. no blinks are loaded today. I was like getting ready for it. And I'm making sure that it's like full Just of like dummies. blanks and everything. But okay. So when was the last time you loaded it? And I loaded it with the with the so I loaded it with five of the dummy rounds before lunch. She's talking about loading the gun before lunch. I loaded it with five dummy rounds before lunch. I wasn't loading blanks this day. That would have been on the call sheet. We talked about that yesterday. And then she is, I think, going to get to the wonky round because I've seen this in legal filings. I haven't seen this interview. But so she loaded five out of the six before lunch. And there was one that wouldn't go in. And so when we got back from lunch, I took the like little cleaner guy. I cleaned it out really quick and I put another dummy in there. Okay. So there are five total in the gun. Yeah. Can you six uh, describe? Total. There was six. Total. Six, five, yeah. When the incident occurred, yeah, there was six. Okay. Can you describe the gun? Can this interview uh, hinder her called, case? Yes. Long barrel Colt. Cult. Long barrel? Mm hmm And six rounds fit in it? Yeah. What color? A brown. So it's bronze? Yeah, they're bad. Yes, it yeah, is a six shooter. What, uh, the detective, color. the lead detective with the yeah, yeah, the I, reddish hair, took the Miranda card and put it on her clipboard earlier. And that was the only one that was used today. No, the other two were used too. Okay. What yeah. does it look like? Uh, da, 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 da. those are both forty-five. I think they're either Colts or Uberties. Um. 45 and yeah, the two other characters have them. Okay. And they're revolver looking? Yeah, they are revolvers. But She's the talking about the other guns used for the day. The one that was used during the incident, just to be clear. The 45 Colt yeah. Long Barrel. The Long Barrel one, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The other two were on the actors, and those were fine. The other two were on the other okay. actors. So they're kind of like for show, pretty much. You know, they're holsters? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, they took them out and they had them on camera too. And... Yeah. Okay. Um, do you know what time did you go to lunch? I about like 1230. Pretty much on the dot. And then, so after that, Sarah pulled them out. Yeah. Did she? Did yeah. you see her um, check them, or did she just hand them to you, and that's when you checked the rounds? She just handed us. We all took them. We took them in the bag to the set, so we didn't check them there. They're in little like socks, little socks. The she's talking about taking Sarah Zachary getting the guns out of the gun safe. The guns were in the gun socks. They took them on the set, but they didn't check them there. That's what she's saying. What do those look like? Little fox. They look like. <laughs> All right. Yeah. They uh, they honestly look like fox. Yeah. Okay. And so when you checked it, it was on set or prior mm -hmm. to checking. Yeah, it was on set. Um, I didn't really check it too much after lunch, you know, because because it was already locked up and everything at lunch. But yeah, I checked it and uh, put in that last round and send it in. Okay. Yeah. I know that you had said something about um, keeping stuff in your fanny pack. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? The answer that's going to hurt her here is I didn't really check it after lunch because, you know, it was because it was locked up. It was reasons because reasons. I didn't really check it after lunch. I think if they bring in a uh, expert or a professional armorer, all they are going to say is you check it, you check it again. You check it again. The sense I get is that armorers, like lawyers, are annoying as fuck. And they say, no, 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 we're not doing that. No, we're not doing this. No, I'm going to check it again. No, it's not ready yet. No, I won't go faster. No, you can't make me go faster. It's just, <sighs> but the like, nah, we didn't, I mean, I didn't check it again after lunch is not going to help at all. Yeah, it's a little fanny pack. It's super, it has a lot of pockets, so it's really cool to, like, you know, the the dummies from the blanks, but it's mostly to separate. 
My fanny pack is like really cool. It has a zipper and a lot of pockets to separate the ammo. That's what she's talking about. I like the blank sizes because there's quarter loads, there's half loads, and then there's full loads. And I usually don't keep any full loads out there unless I need them. Um, but uh, I usually keep quarter loads and half loads right here. So if it's close up to an actor, we use the half, a quarter load. And if it's farther away from an actor, we go ahead and we use halves. Okay. So what's the reasoning for that? Uh, just uh, the halves have more smoke and they look more real. Okay. Yeah. So pretty much for... Like if it was a bigger gun, like a rifle or something. Yeah. So you keep or if it's outdoors, you know. But mostly it's the, it's the quarters just in case they're closer proximity to an actor. Because know? it's dangerous. Or if it's inside quarters. Or if it's around an animal or a child's quarters. Okay. And then you had said... Um, that they're only supposed to pretty much expel dust or smoke, right? Yes. Okay. Um, were you inside when the incident occurred? No, I was right outside by my, uh, uh, what do you call it, my uh, cart. Okay. How close was it? Uh, about 20, no, 15, 15, 20 feet from being inside. Okay. What side of the building was done? Uh, so the building with the door is facing, I don't know, my north and west. Oh, where the crossing? <clears throat> I think that was made the So where the, where the door, where they were like coming in and everything, that door, we were like right adjacent to that, to the left. Okay. Thanks for holding yeah. inside at all? No, not really. Um, no, I couldn't see inside. What do you remember about basically? I just want to clarify this, Tamara. Um, Tamara, sorry, either if I pronounced it wrong. So that bullet was in the gun in the film we watched yesterday as he pointed it at the camera. No, the film that we saw yesterday from Baldwin on the set of Rust was before lunch. So we don't know. If the sixth round was the one that was live, then it was after lunch. But it is it is possible that the live round was in the gun when we saw him doing that before lunch. Before lunch, the gun had five she said dummies. She said she checked them all. After lunch, they put in a sixth, um, and she said she checked it, and it was a dummy. So it's possible, but we can't be, I mean, 100% sure because of what we've learned. Thank you guys for the gifted memberships. Um, it's incredibly kind. So we don't know before lunch, after lunch, uh, when that round was in there, but he was going through those same actions in the video after lunch, but it was not rolling, so it's not on camera. I just like, you know, we had a couple of, uh, like we had a me, popper bad, pop me, last no, week. You know, the poppers are for special effects. Like one just went off randomly last week. So I was like, oh. It must be a popper, and like, you know, I checked all of them myself. So I heard like the shot, and I was in. I'm going to back this up to she gets to the shot. Christy said, OSHA professional here. This blows my mind. Plan for failure. Christy, go watch my video with the scathing OSHA report. Uh, scathing, scathing OSHA report um, on this set. There's a lot of failure here. We're, this trial is focused on Hannah's failure, but there's a lot of failure on set. It is not just her that failed here, but I'm backing up as she's getting into when she heard the shot happen. So I backed little, up a like, bit. Socks. I backed okay. up yeah. way too right. much. Yeah, they, uh, they honestly look like socks, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was on set. Um, I don't really check the lockdown thing. Um, and then, okay. Yeah. I know that you had said something about Stuff in your fanny pack? Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? I backed yeah, up way too far. Fanny pack. It's super. It has a lot of pockets, so it's really cool. I backed like, up way too far. We're back know, to the fanny pack. The, Sorry, chat. The dummies from the half loads and um, a quarter load, and if it's farther away from an actor, we go ahead and we use halves. More real? Okay. Yeah. So pretty much for like if it was a bigger gun, like a rifle. But mostly it's the, it's the quarters inside. And you had said um, that they're only supposed to pretty much expel dust or smoke, right? Yes. Okay. Um, were you inside when the incident occurred? No, I was right outside by my, uh, 
uh, what do you call it? My uh, cart. Okay. How close was it? Uh, about 20, no, 15, 15, 20 feet from being inside. Okay. What side of the building was done? Uh, so the building with the door is facing, I don't know my door. So the, with the crossing? <clears throat> I think that, that was made the door. So where, where, where the door, where they were like coming in and everything, that door, we were like right adjacent to that, to the left. Okay. Could you yeah. see inside at all? No, not really. Um, no, I couldn't see inside. What do you remember about? Basically, I just like, you know, we had a couple of, uh, like we had a popper pop last week, you know, the poppers are for special effects, like one just went off randomly last week, so I was like, oh, it must be a popper, and like, you know, I checked all of them myself, so I heard like the shot, and I was, and Sarah was like, what was that, and I was like, must have been a popper, and I like turned around, and then I heard them say, She testified that she had been around gunfire her entire life, and she was like 20 feet outside the small church where a 45 long colt went off, and she thought it was a popper. That doesn't resonate for me. That's not, it's, it just doesn't resonate for me. Medic emergency. And I was like, what the fuck? And then I like checked in and I like looked and I saw Alec on the ground. And I was like, oh, not Alec, uh, Joel. And I was like, what the fuck? Was it the gun? And Jay was like, yeah, it was a fucking gun. And so I was like, I walked in and I like tried to see what was happening or like where the gun was, you know, to secure the weapons on the set. And I got yelled at um, and I ran out and Dave brought me the gun and I opened the gun up and one of the dummies somehow had been discharged. And can you... Dave gave me the gun. I opened the gun up. This is the chain of custody I was confused about. The shooting happens. Dave Halls, it sounds like, takes the gun from Baldwin. Dave Halls gives the gun to her. And then she opens back up the gun and sees that one of the dummies somehow got discharged. And yes, chat, if one of the gummies, dummy, I said gummies, if one of the dummies got discharged, it was not a dummy. But it's very confusing to me that she did not perceive that the shot from the 45 was a gun blast. So at this point, she has the gun. It has five of six rounds in it. Where does it go next? Because we heard an opening that Sarah Zachary dumped the bullets out. Kind of explain a little bit more what you mean by uh, that it was discharged. So when, if I had a bullet, wait. I Wait, in your pocket? You have a bullet in your pocket. So. I mean, that said, when I worked in right. Check it out. that said, when I worked in clothing, I would come home and have like all of the little like um, sizers that you put on the hangers, like small, medium, large, extra large, whatever. I would have those in my pockets. But she's just rolling into the the police department with a pocket full of ammunition. She did just say, "Check these out," as she like just put a handful. Uh, oh, okay. Do you think law enforcement at this point is like, we should have checked her pockets? Do you think anyone's considered this at all? Uh, I wish it had just been one of these. She's not wearing her fanny pack. Her fanny pack is still inside the crime scene on set because she was asking them to get it back for her. Uh, um, but see how these have like the whole, okay. this one doesn't have a primer, right? And most of them, like they have like the primers, but the primers aren't like hot. Like, I've never had one with a hot primer before. Okay. So that seems pretty weird to me. Um, but so basically... A projectile fired part, out of the weapon you loaded, that does seem, it seems weird to me too. When a bullet shoots, the fire projects it. And this comes out, this little piece right here, this little nipple. She's yeah. telling law enforcement so when how I the weapons work. the gun, this part, that was gone. Did you get to see the shot? I saw the shell, yeah, and it's on the, it's on the thing. Did it have one of the...
I saw the shell. This is critical. I saw the shell. It doesn't have the thing. I think she means the primer. And it's on, it's on the thing. So she thinks that what was in the gun is still on the cart. It seems that that's what she thinks. Hi, Run Hi Runkle. The chat wants to know if this is pigeon business, but I, I wonder if this is worse. Did it look like this or was it different? It looked, it wasn't, it didn't have the hole, it didn't have that. So I mean, it had that and it didn't have the hole. Didn't um, have the hole. This was gone. So Obviously. It was just the shell. Just the shell. Just the shell. cartridge. Just the regular, like, cartridge when it was shot. Yeah. So these ones are done or because they have the hole. Yeah. So that one didn't have a hole. So it looked like a real lithic. Yeah, one when you saw it. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about your? What about your blanks? What about them? Do they? What's the difference between a blank and that? You know, I don't think I could show you, but uh, the blanks it's very different. Um, and you would absolutely be able to tell the difference just by looking at it. Uh, so basically, her defense attorney has argued multiple times you cannot tell the difference between. Uh, no, the dummies and the lives, not the blanks and the dummies. She's saying you can absolutely tell the difference between the blanks and the dummies just by looking at them. Basically, the end here where this is gone, uh, the projectile is gone in the blanks, basically. This is squeezed shut. Like, you know, it smells just like a little bit of gunpowder. Like I said, either quarter, half loader, full of filled with a little bit of black powder. And it's opened by the metal part just going... So just so nothing flies out of those. Okay, so this is pretty much what looked like what was in the gun. This is one hundred percent what was in the gun. Well, Except it's not though. Without that. Okay. And with the primer, but the primer normally is on there anyways for a lot of them. Okay. Yeah. So it's not as well. Known. No, it's not. A lot of them are. A lot of them have the primer, so that way you can like see them in the belt, and they look real. Okay. But a lot of them also have the primer in a hole, and that one didn't have a hole. All right. So you have said when, who, so how did you end up getting the gun after? Um, I went in there, they yelled at me, I ran out, and I was like, can I see the gun? And they brought me the gun, and I opened it and checked it. And the very first one that I like, because you know, once you shoot it, the next one in a revolver, it'll be that one. And the first one I pulled out didn't have that. Okay. Did you get to see any of the others? Uh, the others all had. Yeah, I took well, them all did out. Did it look like that the part too. when you put it in? They all had rings, and they all had holes, and I don't understand. No, that one did not. And Corporal, just to be clear, the live rounds that were found on set, none of them rattled, did they? No, they didn't rattle. And none of them had holes in the side, did they? No. And I think, I think there's the more room to clarify what Hannah's telling them. We know the live rounds don't rattle. We know they don't have holes. I think there's more room to clarify what Hannah's saying. So, um, what is this? Oh. Oh, okay. So just the noise. So that's what I'm saying. So this one is exactly what it looked like was in there. Okay. And that one doesn't have any holes. So that's some, yeah. Um, honestly, that box of there. dummies might have some wonky ones in it. And we got that, I think, a week ago. Who ordered them? Um, well, we got the box of dummies might have some wonky ones in there. We got that a week ago. If by wonky we mean live, that's different. Them from our front, like from Seth, our like supplier and everything. Okay. But Seth borrowed them from someone. I don't know who. Borrowed the ones that you have? Yeah. Um, She's talking yeah. about Seth Kinney. Yeah. And how do you know he borrowed them? I don't know. Uh, that's what Sarah said. And then as soon as Sarah called Seth, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what, if she talked to him or anything about this. Okay. You mean today, if she calls him today and already talked to him, or when? I, ha I don't. Uh, Corporal, based on your investigation, well, let me back up. I, I think that we heard uh, Ms. Gutierrez 
um, testify that that box of dummies might have had some wonky ones in it. Is, it, is that right? Yes. And it came in about a week and ago. Did she also testify that that, that box was on. provided about a week earlier by Mr. Kenny? Yes. And did you continue to investigate uh, the the box and the source of that box of dummies? Yes. Based on your investigation, uh, was Ms. Gutierrez's assertion that that box came from Mr. To. Kenny a week earlier, did, was that assertion correct? No, it wasn't. I she, she, she chose to talk to with that lawyer. The police officer told her to stop talking to me. Okay. So I don't really know what happened with that. Um, um, she was talking, she said I was talking with someone and I think Sarah, I'm going to back up real quick because it started and I was talking, but the police officer came up and told her to stop talking to me. The police were trying to separate everyone on set so that they weren't talking to each other. Um, but I didn't get to hear the police officer told her to stop talking to me. Okay. So I don't really know what happened with that. Um, but yeah, so. Okay. Um, are you aware of a time or know if something like that can be dysfunctional or? I mean, you know, like overall, these are some weird, like what we're dealing with are like, you know, explosives. It is, there's always like a chance of like, you know, safety to be compromised. And that's the issue. And that's what I'm supposed to watch out for on set. Yeah. Did you hear her answer? There's always a chance. And if I was going to do the closing, I would do this. This is exactly what I would talk about. There's always a chance for safety to be compromised on set. And that's what I'm here to prevent. That's, that's that, that's, that's that, that is that. All right. I'm going to back that up real quick. If you guys didn't hear it, um, I'm going to see if I can back it up real quick. There's always a chance for safety to be compromised on set. And that's what I'm supposed to prevent. And if I were the prosecutor, I would stop this interview and ask the corporal what she just said. I don't know if she will, but. There's always like a chance of like, you know, safety to be compromised. And that's the issue. And that's what I'm supposed to watch out for on set. That's and, what I'm supposed to watch yeah. out for. Okay. That's what I'm supposed to watch out for. What did Ms. Gutierrez just say? What she's supposed to watch out for? I should have just waited. <laughs> There are some moments that are too, there are some moments you cannot let pass. This is a moment you cannot let pass. What's that? Uh, the ammunition, pretty much. No, that's not what she said. Corporal, pay attention. She said something much more significant than that. She said there is always a chance for safety to be, now the prosecutor is going to back it up. She's going to do what we just did. Today, if she called him today, I already talked to him. Or when I, I don't, I know she called him, but I didn't get to hear the police officer told her to stop talking to me. Okay. So I don't really know what happened with that. Um, but yeah, so. Okay. Um, are you aware of a time or know if something like that can be dysfunctional or? I mean, you know, like overall, these are some weird, like what we're dealing with are like, you know, explosives. It is, there's always like a chance of like, you know, safety to be compromised. And that's the issue. And that's what I'm supposed to watch out for on set. And yeah. Okay. Now stop it. But, um, I've never really heard of. I've heard of blanks before with the primer, you know, that's the only time I've ever heard of them, which is why I'm wondering if it was kind of one of the older ones, because that kind of stopped after that whole Brandon Lee situation. 
twice but I'm not really sure. She's so aware. Seth orders all of your rounds. Yeah. And is there anybody else that's involved in that? Um, I can't really say. Okay. I just get what I get, and I'm told not to visit it. Um, I get yeah. what I get, and I don't Can't get upset. Can you the manufacturer, is it No. See what the box looks like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's the, really, the on the cart. I'm really surprised the prosecutor around. didn't pause it again and ask again. Yeah. Really surprised. Real, real surprised. What, Corporal, did Ms. Gutierrez just tell you where you could find the box of dummy rounds that she was pulling from? Yeah, she said it was on the cart. Okay. And, and is that consistent with what you saw in Mr. Benavides's video? Um, in his lapel video, she grabbed them from the cart, however, handed them directly to Lieutenant Benavides. Okay, so somewhat consistent. Yes. I don't know about that. Just that you have to them or... No, that says uh, he's um, had armor on for The Walking Dead. He was on that show for 10 years. But he's also familiar about. Wait, who was on the show The Walking Dead? Who was on the show The Walking Dead? I'm so confused. I feel like we're getting overlap from the prosecutor talking in the video stop starting. He was on that show for 10 years. But he's also familiar about. Yeah, getting these. Yeah, Seth is like, yeah, he pretty much is teaching me everything. Seth Kenning. My father. Seth and her father, okay. Has anyone ever allowed live ammo on set? No one. Okay. What's your guys' protocol for the ammo? Protocol. Um, like, what do you have in place? You know, Operating you procedures, day, safety procedures. Um, basically, basically, like, you know, our protocol for the ammo is like you know i have to know load sizes i have to know like who's in the proximity if it's a child if it's a horse um and my protocol really is a lot of checking for barrel obstructions mostly because that's where a lot of mistakes get made is like just a blank behind something and a lot of guns get thrown into like dropped in rocks you know and rocks get into the barrel and fly out and shit so my mindset is mostly just checking the barrel and everything and then making sure the dummies are dummies yeah and I'm my shit is checking the barrel and everything and making sure the dummies are dummies i would be clipping down this interview for a closing argument that is my job making sure the dummies are dummies never really had any that didn't sound like dummies when you lift the, the gun, when he Dave brought it back to you after the incident? Yes, Runkle, and maybe check for like live ammo. the same gun when you handed it to Dave? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, I would I would be able to tell, too, by the circling markings on the bottom of it. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember what those markings are? Mm, they're kind of like, kind of like little fingernail marks, but like a little more than this. Okay. The interviewer just was like, I'll be right back. How much time? Okay, so how many guns were pulled out after lunch? Like seven. Seven? Yeah. Seven. Okay. Um, Kez Miller has two. I've seen a lot of comments in the chats and a lot of questions about if she's under the influence. Uh, they did not test her. If law enforcement believed or thought or perceived that she was under the influence, you can absolutely guarantee yourself that they will test her. Law enforcement didn't. She has been on set since quite early in the morning. She had a complete full panic attack on set after this happened. This could just be her affected demeanor after seeing someone shot on set with guns she was responsible for. So, though I've seen a lot of speculation about it, um, one of the things law enforcement is going to do if they suspect anyone is under the influence is, is test them. This just might be the affect after the adrenaline has come down um, and, and the shock has come down. So, I've seen a lot of questions about it, but if 
if that was the case, law enforcement would have done something and they did not. So I'm going with that is not the case because law enforcement did not do that. So that's where I'm at on that. Um, did she get something from the EMTs? I don't believe so. The EMTs went to go treat her and uh, I think give her water and, and sit with her. She might still be in shock, but if law enforcement thought that anything was up, they would have tested her. So. Oh, maybe, okay, my Miller has two. Uh, we have to trust the, the people in the room with her, no. Two, and then Rust has one, and then there's three long guns out. So, so all the long guns. Sorry, Miller has two, the officers have two. Yeah, who else? Uh, Rust has one. That was the one that was discharged. And, um, yeah. Uh, and then we had three long guns that were on the cart. A shotgun and a rifle. Two shotguns and a rifle. And you're in charge of watching all of these? Yeah. Two, four, hold on, three, eight. Okay. And you said Rust? Yes. Rust is the character. Okay. And you handed it directly to him. Or did you hand it to Dave? Um, I handed it to Dave after lunch. So then Dave gave it to us. Yeah. Do you know, uh, oh, the ear, Do the you know oh. who all was inside the building? She said, I handed it to Dave after lunch. But she also said it was in, oh no, it was in the safe. It came out of the safe. She handed it to Dave after lunch before it gets into uh, the church. During the incident. Uh, some new camera people we got. Our camera crew just quit last night. Why did? Yeah, the whole fucking crew, except for like two. Why? One dude that stayed. Why? Um, yeah, I'm in the DP, the director. Do you know anybody's name? Helena is the DP. She got shot. The director is Joel. He, he got said, shot. I'm sorry. So D, DP? Director of photography. Okay. And that was Helena? Mm -hmm. H E L E N A? I'm um, not really sure how to spell it. Okay. Kind of Russian. Do you know her last name? No. And you said Joel. And he's another director? Yeah, I'm Joel. He's the director, director. And he said that he was also shot? Yeah, which is just fucking mind-boggling to me. Yeah, both of them got shot. She said it's fucking mind-boggling to me that both so of them got shot. Many... I don't know if the admissions she makes here in the first video will force her to testify. We will see what happens at the end of all of the videos, because there are multiple. Around there. I heard one. one. You just heard one. I heard one. So it must have went through one and somehow hit the other. Uh, Krista, when she says I fucked up, Which is it's acknowledging right. responsibility for the thing. That's okay. why they'll use it. Do you know anybody story. else that was inside? No, I don't. I wasn't there. Rogue nerd, well, same. Yeah, Alex, right? Yeah, Alex was inside. Fuck yeah. I'm sad. I hate myself for that. And what about Dave? Yeah, Dave. I'm going to rewind this because she's talking about Alec and got so loud when the other officer came back in. Well, obviously, yeah, Alec, right? Yeah, Alec was inside. Fuck yeah. I'm sad. I hate myself for that. And what about Dave? Yeah, Dave was inside. Um, what's the, do you know Dave's last name? It's on the call sheet. So she's pulling up the call sheet on her phone to get everybody's Denise name. Gutierrez saying that she hates herself because Alec Baldwin was in the church. Yes. Uh, this is like so awful. Dave Paul's Paul. Yeah. And yeah. uh, I got the Helena Hutchins. Harry, hey, this is an excellent point. Harry yeah. yeah. makes an excellent point. She was another person that was in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have Helena, Joel. Do you know Joel's last name? Joel, uh, old. Joel Silva, S O U Z A. Okay. Alec, Dave, anybody else inside? Um, well, her first 
from study cam operator was inside. His name is Reed Russell, R E I D R U S S E L. He's a camera guy. Okay. So, my God. Did they identify the people that was inside? Um, she was. Yeah. Uh, I do know this just because, it, and I don't care about north or that, but yeah, this never so should have happened. Where we were parked here at the back of the church, that where was the front, the cars, where you were parked. I like yeah, the diagram. Yeah, we were parked over here. So the church across the main entrance to that would have been over here. We were parked. Okay, over here. yeah, yeah. Where was your car? Because I don't think there was doors here or on this side of the building. So there's a door here, okay. and my car was approximately over here by a little. Lack tent where okay. producers or fucking cast or anyone. Which Chris, that's fair. Really. Okay, and then that door's over here. So can you can? She might have been talking about the ammo. Can you see the front that door from where you were standing? Lunch. Yeah, and you could see Dave the whole time on his way. On his way. Corporal, did Ms. Thanks, Gutierrez Jim. indicate that the prop cart? Uh, during the incident was located over by the black tent? Yes. And was that the exact same spot where it was when Mr. Halls took Mr. Benavides over point, to the park to look for the gun? Yes. She's establishing the prop no, no, I, I that. She's establishing that the prop cart wasn't moved, which I think was good to tie in because the defense was like anybody could have done anything they're trying to establish the prop cart wasn't moved I had to hand him the gun oh he, he was sitting in, he was standing in pretty much okay so you, you didn't just hand it and then he walked off and no went, yeah so you i handed it. it to dave with the camera people there okay. so you were close to the door when you handed it i was in i was inside for a second okay. and then i went back out because yeah they tell you to get out yeah. Okay. Pretty much. I'm just curious because of the whole transferring from one person to another of the gun. Yeah. Um. So he he is the one who gives it directly to Alex. Um. Here's a picture. Um. And it just wants. What? 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 What just happened? In the. I'm going to switch feeds in a second. We were just watching a feed and then, and then it disappeared. Where did the feed? What just happened? I don't know what just happened. Um, I was a little behind on live time and the feed just jumped so let's see where we were. Um, hopefully uh, we were the here. ammunition, pretty much. Um, that was so strange. Um, safety to be compromised, and that's the issue. And okay, we covered that. That was so weird. Check Photograph a second. of the projectile that oh. was. I don't know what just happened with this feed. Sure. Um, and I just want to see if this is something that would have come out of one of these. So Hold on. Um, oh, they're getting the pictures from the hospital. I'm going to have to manually back this up a little bit because the feed jumped. That was so weird. Um, is it because they were showing a picture in the judge? No, I don't think so. It was, that was a, a, a jump. My buffer could have gotten too large. That's possible. Um, let's see. We'll just back up a bit and see what happens. I don't think there was doors here or on this side of the building. Are, this yeah, is yeah. them. Okay, or, this is where we were. The main entrance. We were parked. Yeah, we were parked over here. So Port the church across the main entrance. There's so only one. Been. There's only one feed, but that was weird that it just like jumped. Let's see what happens here. Um. Over here, we were parked. Okay, over yeah, yeah. Where was your car? Because I don't think there was doors here or on this side of the building. So there's a door here, okay. and my cart was approximately over here by a little black tent. <laughs> where, where producers or it's weird that it jumped forward. Or anyone, which 
shown under it really. Okay, okay. and then that door is over here. So can you can can you see the front that door from where you were standing? They're probably on the afternoon yeah. lunch break. We're a little behind because I keep pausing. On his way. On his way. Corporal, did Ms. Gutierrez indicate that the prop cart uh, during the incident was located over by the black tent? This yes. is where we were. And was that the exact same spot where it was when Mr. Halls took Mr. Benavides over to the cart to look for the gun? Yes. Okay. That's um, the one. I went outside to hand him the gun. Oh, he, he was, was sitting. In he was standing in pretty much. Okay. So you, you didn't just hand it and then he walked off. And no. Went yeah. So you I handed it to Dave with the camera people there. Okay. So you were close to the door when you handed it. I was in. I was inside for a second, and then I went back out because yeah. They tell you to get out. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. I'm just curious because of the whole transferring from the one person to another of the gun. Yeah. Um. So he he is the one who gives it directly to Alec. Um. Here's a picture. Um. And I just want to see if this is something that would have come out of one of these. Totally. It wouldn't be a a real. Real life. Let me pause there for a moment. Um, what is Detective Talamante, or now rather Corporal Talamante, uh, showing Ms. Gutierrez on her phone? So we had um, received a photo from the deputy that was at the hospital with Joel, Joel. Souza. So it's the. Um, he had sent us a. It's the expended round from the back photograph of the projectile that was removed from his shoulder um, inside a little like plastic canister essentially that the hospital staff had put it in um i'm not going to put this up on the monitor because i think everybody can see it i'm showing you what's already been entered as states exhibit 54 uh is this a photograph of what it, it, is this what was in that photograph yes okay uh just the projectile it, yeah inside of a little cool. container though okay and, and and this was just a photograph that a detective at the hospital took of the projectile inside the container and texted uh i don't believe it was a detective that was there it was just a deputy that i'm um, sorry yeah that was instructed to go to the hospital with joel Souza. somebody had to go to the hospital Somebody from law enforcement was going to go to the hospital with the victim, so they are I, showing her what came out of the uh, uh, shoulder. Um, so that that looks like a blank one, which I'm pretty sure because normally the blank ones, like they have kind of this little line right there, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure the regular ones don't. Okay, so that detective. She says that looks like a blank one. Uh, are you now relatively familiar with blank rounds? Yes. Do blank rounds look anything like that projectile? No. It looks like that would be in the blanks all the time. This is also a good time for a reminder that when she is discussing an incident in real time after trauma, and when she's like, I'm pretty sure that's this and that, she might have completely fucked that up and not known because she is under uh, trauma and because she is stressed. However, it's a good reason maybe not to have these conversations um, in the moment. And, and she might have to testify to explain it because when they're pointing out that she says, oh, this dummy round, this looks exactly like a dummy round. They're like, it absolutely does not. She might have to explain that because it makes her look like she does not know what's going on. But again, this is a reason to maybe not have that conversation today because you can say things that you don't know um, or that you do know, but you actually can't access your working memory. So there's a lot of reasons there that um, that are, are reasons maybe not to have this conversation right now. Just, just a reminder. That but now she might be forced to testify. Oh my God, poor Helena. So that's why they were thinking it could be an actual live round at this point. Really? Yeah. Does that look like it would have been a live round too? Well, honestly, if we had 
my instructor, we could pull this out and check it. But um, I don't know. Actually, it's so cool. Yeah, I don't know. Because look at that line. That's kind of a distinct thing. She that's, said, if I, I have my extractor, we can pull it out. Dummies. Let's not do that. Just to be clear, was Ms. Gutierrez offering to use a device to disassemble around? Yes. Did she do that? Uh, no, we couldn't. I could not find a tool at the, my at the sheriff's office. She said my extractor. But did she indicate to you that she had one? Uh, yes. But just not on her? Correct. All right. Yeah, that's about the extractor. Hold on. Might, and that might be a regular live round, though. It looks pretty. That's what they were thinking. It could be a live round. Um, holy fuck. No. I, I just that's what making that's what's making them think it's a live round her response to that was holy fuck i think i don't know what else you say to that you said and i and i think that's why there's protocol because of lee when all that happened on set two was there anything that stuck out of the ordinary today to you no i mean just the whole camera group quit that's all. The whole camera crew quitting is a kind of big deal. When did the camera crew quit? Uh, yesterday. So, is there a reason? I don't know. Okay. Um, I, mean, I don't think that they would be involved in that. Well, I don't know if we'll yeah. see it. Is there trial. because maybe people were disgruntled? Oh, there was definitely some bickering. But I don't, yeah. I, I highly doubt that they were able to switch any rounds, and especially getting a 45 round is like stupid hard right now. Mm -hmm. And at least, yeah. Was there any chat for those of you asking about the sabotage theory that the defense has since put forward? She is debunking any potential sabotage by telling them no one's disgruntled, you can't even get 45 rounds right now she is now debunking that this could have been sabotage in her interview oh, that towards joel or did anybody have any issues with uh, joel and what was the other one i don't believe anyone had issues with joel what was, uh, helena helena yeah i don't know um i don't know too much about her she's definitely a strong personality that's all but there's nobody that you could think of that might have any anger? I couldn't really say that anyone would be like that angry. Like, you know, we're on a film set. Everybody's always pissed off at each other a little bit. <laughs> Together for 12 hours a day. We're on a film set. Everybody's always a little pissed off at each other. Anyway, we're working 12 hour days, but she is saying no one's that upset. Like it's, it's, it's a tense legal. It's a tense, I don't, not legal. It is a tense, um work environment but she's not worried about sabotage five days a week you know yeah 12 hours a day it's seven hard days to a not week. beef with people a little bit well i mean it's kind of interesting that the whole camera crew quit yep. yesterday sure is. that is pretty something funny. happens like this today would somebody want to maybe uh or they could even have an issue without this. Somebody wants to disrupt the filming of this movie. Mm -hmm. Is that I don't, something that you could think of? I don't know. I can't really say for sure. And I wouldn't want to think that about anybody on that set, personally. You really don't want to think that about anybody. Never. But no. unfortunately, yeah, I can't think of like any one person. I couldn't really think of a situation that would require, like, you know, I don't know, almost killing somebody. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it happened. I mean, yeah. you keep mentioning it was what the crow when that happened. Yeah, that was scary, so, man. These things happen when these somebody. Thing, I know. I can't believe I'm like the last thing like this to happen since the crow. And my own fucking worst thing. Well, she just, I think right now they're good, but she said, halfway, unfortunately. She said, "This is my own fucking worst nightmare." I, I absolutely, absolutely believe her. Uh, I don't know if she's aware that Helena's dead. They have not told her that. Um, I just don't know if she's assuming being hyperbolic or if they've told her.
Yeah. Loading the gun. Totally. Yeah, they're definitely gonna look at the person who's loading the gun. Yeah. Yeah, they're definitely gonna look at the person who's loading the gun. Yeah, you're in charge of it, but that's that's also why would you put yourself in that predicament? Yeah. You know, so would it be possible? Yeah. I don't know. I think I think maybe there was just perhaps a bad round in that box. Mm -hmm. Well, a couple of bad, bad rounds. I think there was possibly, a bad round in the box. Because there wasn't one round that went off. What? There was one. Right? How did, because the um, people get shot. No, so there was only one round that went off, and oh. I must have went through Joel somehow and fucking hit Helena, and I'm like flabbergasted by this. Other, other way around on that, but the law enforcement officer is saying two went off, and she's saying, no, it must have gone through and through, which is correct. It's just the other way around. Yes, Ron. Um, I can't correct. fucking imagine how that happened, but I heard one shot. Okay. Yeah, I heard one shot, and you honestly, it was like, I opened up the gun, I checked the rest of them, only one of these was gone, and the rest were fine. Mm -hmm. Only one was gone, the rest were fine. Who threw them away? Mm -hmm. I wish we could. This one has a different house than this one. The I wish you had the that, ones yeah. that were in the guns and evidence. Yeah, I mean, like, they're all, I mean, like, you know, they all kind of vary a little bit. That's just the thing about them. They all vary a little bit. Um, Talk this through with me. If they all vary a little bit, doesn't it become more important that you check each and every one if they all vary a little bit? Just think it out loud. Um, yeah. Please stop. Tell me about what happened yesterday. Did something happen or did they just walk off set and said, I have no idea. I think at the end of the night, they all quit. Um, uh, the camera crew always bickered a lot, to be honest. Like, a lot of, I don't know, just, just like animosity, I guess. Those, ca those camera crew. Them with the grits. Uh, everybody, yeah, that whole, it's almost unpleasant to be inside there. She's like that whole department. So, like, toxic. Yeah. So, COVID, yeah, I tried to stay out. And then I was definitely on the sides watching. And they weren't supposed to be pulling the hammer back or anything. Like, it was just supposed to be in the shot. And so I don't know why yeah. it was pulled back. I don't know what, yeah. I mean, if, if they wanted it pulled back, like, that's fine. I, I had no idea about it, you know. If, but even if they were going to be pulling it back, they should have told you. Then it wouldn't have gone on. Yeah. So that's why I was all like, I was like, okay, like it's right there. You know, I stand right by whenever there's gunfire. I'm still there whenever the shit's there, but I'm not usually directly inside the room just because they don't find it necessary. Okay, yeah. but it is well, necessary. Is like, they're not supposed to pull the hammer back, but it still is a prop gun or prop. It's a real gun. It's, it's a real, real gun. fucking gun. But you're prop. Yeah. That. Yeah. So. Yeah. Totally. I know. I just. I know. Thanks, Persephone. I wish I would have checked it more. I wish I would have checked it more. If the prosecutor doesn't pause and ask what she just said, I'm going to yell. But I wish I would have checked it more. Is what the prosecutor said in opening. Um. I wish they would have also said that she knew that safety concerns on set is what she was supposed to look out for, but I wish I would have checked it more. I wish I would have checked it more. I bet she does. Is there anything that you think could have happened? I have no idea. I cut out. I don't know. Uh, like I said, that box was shown there for lunch. Uh, I will say it is hard to get 45 ammo. You know, ammo is super expensive right now and ever since the election. Pretty much all ammo has been like bought up a ton. I'm sure you guys know as a police force. Yeah. So she's like, I don't deal with I was purchasing just ammo. Thinking you had mentioned when you were loading, dumbing it up, one of the rounds, one of the six rounds didn't fit in, correct? And you had to clean it. Yeah. Did that feel seem odd to you? The wonky no, round. No, that didn't really seem that odd. That gun had been dropped a lot in the Dirt previous before that, um, yeah. 
so it might have just been a little gunky. And then after I cleaned it out, like it fit right in. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. Does that usually happen? Does that usually happen? Um. I mean, every now and then. Every now and then. Yeah. You didn't think it that. Hey, it Captain with the Barbie. Good to see you in chat. Was the reason why it was initially given? You know, I don't think so because like these are Jonathan, dummies and everything, and they fly it out a little. These are not all dummies. Jonathan said, "What is live image?" ammo doing on the set it never should have been there that's part of this trial is finding out why it was there she keeps saying these are all dummies these are not all dummies that has been established a little easier per se but um yeah i don't i don't think that that would have been a thing sometimes they do just get stuck because like the guns are a little dirty hey, we banged corporal did Ms. gutierrez sometimes they get stuck because things get a little dirty but she didn't pause it when she said, I wish I would have checked it more. I'm confused at the strategy here. There is uh, just to indicate that the dummies slide in and out of the cylinder a little easier than live rounds. Yes. And she also indicated that that last round uh, didn't want to go in as easily. Is that correct? Yes. That sixth round that she... Uh, that's leading, but it's very helpful. The interview said live rounds don't go in as good as easily as dummy rounds that last round wasn't going in smoothly that sixth round wasn't going in smoothly this is the first time i've seen this prosecutor tie things up in a way where i'm like thank you that's real fucking helpful that's real that's real helpful that that the woodpecker and the cardinal are still fighting um i'm gonna back that up just a little to hear exactly what hannah said but that's real helpful clarification thing sometimes they do just get stuck because like the guns are a little dirty Corporal, did Ms. Gutierrez uh, just indicate that the dummies slide in and out of the cylinder a little easier than live rounds? Yes. And she also indicated that that last round uh, didn't want to go in as easily. Is that correct? Yes. That sixth round that she put in after lunch? That's correct. Yeah, that everything else seemed... And that should have seemed Normal like an issue too. Everything seemed status quo, and I thought today was going to be another like super great day, and that we were done shooting after this. And wait, it can be smooth sailing. Wait, <laughs> this was the last day of shooting. We were done shooting after this, and it was going to be smooth sailing. So these are the rounds that I showed you. Wow. You think it could have been from? Wow. The, the dummies. dummies. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not, I can't remember, I can't remember really if I got, um, if they were from the box or if they were from, uh, on, on top of the, we have a cart, you know, mm -hmm. and we have several dummies just around, some come out of the box, some are, but they're all out of boxes really, like, you know, but yeah, um, might have just been one of the ones on the cart. She's not sure where she pulled the ammo from when she loaded that last round. But it should be, yeah. And that's your car. Nobody else puts anything else on it. It might not Dawn, really. Dawn, it I mean, might have been you know, the last day. But it is possible. It is possible. When she said the last day of shooting, it might have been the last day of filming with weapons, as opposed to the last day of filming entirely. Absolutely fair point. And a lot of people have access to your car. Yeah. So as you're loading it, do you Corporal, at this point in time, were you aware that there were actually six live rounds on set? No. So at this point in time, all you knew of was the one that resulted in the injuries. Is that correct? That's correct. Did you and check it every single time? Yeah. Every round? Yeah. And you did it on this time too. I did it. But that one round, it, you weren't sure if it was fresh out of the box I or think, just laying on the cart. Honestly, I don't think like if it didn't rattle, I want to help put it in. Okay. And so you heard the rattle. Okay. Yeah, I checked all all six of them for a rattle. If it hadn't rattled. If it hadn't rattled, I would have put it in. I wouldn't have put it in. I checked all six of them for a rattle. No, you didn't. 
I hate to belabor the point. Nope. She indicated she checked all six of them for a rattle. We're, through this interview, we have been on the same wavelength of the points that we would stop and discuss because I have stopped and discussed and then you would stop and discuss. We are the the wavelength of what is important to stop and discuss is uh is same same at this point. But one of them didn't have a BB in it, right? That's correct. Um, one of the rounds that Hannah had loaded in that firearm was a live round. A hole in the side of it to indicate it was a dummy, so it would not have rattled, which is contrary to her. How do you know that? No, no. How do you know that? Did Hannah tell you one of them had a hole in it? Because one of them had a hole in it wouldn't rattle. But we've been told that all of the rounds that were in the weapon got thrown away. So how would you know that? Statement of if it wouldn't have rattled, I wouldn't have put it in. And Hannah said it. Thank a you. A lot of rounds wouldn't have rattled, rattled, correct? No, they won't. Hannah said it earlier in the interview. Thank you, guys. This one. I just really, I mean, sometimes I guess sometimes Thank happens, you guys. but just that the whole crew quit the table for and then something like this happened. I, I don't know. I totally feel like this was just a fucking really fucked up accident. That's how you feel. Yeah. I have the feeling that this is just a really fucked up accident. So if the defense is going to argue sabotage, her own words are, I have a feeling this is just a really fucked up accident. And that truly might be. I wouldn't think that anyone on that phone set is that malicious. I mean, I just have to ask you. Yeah, no, it's totally. Well, yeah. What about Sarah? How much do you know about her? How long have you worked with her? She's like the nicest little Christian girl ever. Okay. We're gonna talk to her in the extractor. You know, our winner. So extractor. Yeah. For those. Yeah. So I'm gonna take. Okay. Wanna be yeah. out quick? Okay. Oh, I'll be back in just a minute. And so, just to be clear, what are you taking? You have seen that you had pulled out looks like which one? Um, I like that one. Okay. With the, yeah, yeah cause that's when I saw it, it was punctured. So, not, it wasn't the previous when I, when I took it out, yeah, it was punctured, so. You guys asked, did she ever mention feeling rushed in this interview? This is a pretty slow paced interview, so I wouldn't think so. This is, this is truly a pretty slow paced interview. Um, with the way they're going about it. This is not a, I would not consider this to be a high pressure interview at all. Okay. Unless you have anything else that you think. And now they're done. No, sure. Want to add. I'm going to hold on to these. Okay. Actually, hold on to this. Okay. Uh, just one more clarification. Um, oh, rushed on set. The gun I think she was absolutely As rushed on set. I would open it too, or you did all the manipulating of it. You did all the manipulating. Sorry, I misunderstood. I 100% think she was over rushed on set. Yes. 100%. 100%. 100%. Why is she not mentioning being rushed on set? They didn't ask her. She's really just, she has been at work all day. There has been a shooting. It, she is still not processing that there has been a shooting at work and they didn't ask her that. So she's just answering what's asked and not volunteering more information. That's the end of it. Would, would the court like to take the afternoon break? Really fucked up accidents can still right. be voluntary, yeah. involuntary yeah. manslaughter. Yes, they can. Or anyone else about the evidence received here in court? Follow the bailiffs. All right. I'm holding out my, I've been telling you guys where I'm balancing how I think about this case, but I'm not going to make that determination. And I want to hear all the evidence. Uh, truly, I think it's hard, but her job was to load this gun. Um, I'm going to zoom, zoom through the afternoon break. The judge is back. The witness is back on the stand. Uh, let me take a break real quick as we're pulling this back up and let you know. I have an appointment this afternoon, so I'm going to zoom, zoom through this to get you guys back to court. I'm going to do a real quick summary of what we've seen so far as court is coming back. Um, you guys can stay here in the chat with uh, the moderators and the team if you want. Uh, you are welcome to. If anyone else is streaming, uh, do what you like. The reason I'm leaving it up is because there's not that much longer in court today, and I want to make sure that 
three years from now, I don't get questions on the channel like, we're missing the one little last bit of this um, afternoon of evidence because I've seen a ton of those comments on my um, YouTube channel from the Depp v. Heard trial of people saying, where's this half of this day and this half of that day? Um, so it's really, so when people rewatch the trial, there's completeness in it. So I will be in the chat as much as I can. I don't know if anybody else is streaming. I think Alita is, I don't know if lawyer you know is, but the chat will be here. Um, but if anybody else picks up on their channels, feel, feel free to be in the chat here and be watching over there and be whatever you want. So with all of that, let me do a quick summary of, um, of this afternoon. So far this afternoon on day four, we are now with the lead investigator on the Rust case, State versus Hannah Gutierrez, the armor on the set of Rust when Alec Baldwin fatally shot cinematographer Helena Hutchins. We've seen her body cam footage where she uh, starts talking to the lead investigator about how she has just uh, everything is fucked up. She has fucked it up. She's the only female armorer in the game and she's fucked it up that she was trained by her dad and she's really going through like, how did this happen? This is fucked up. We then get into her police in interview in the interrogation room after she is Mirandized. And some of the things that stand out in that interview is she's talking repeatedly about checking all of the rounds, all of them shook, which seems contradictory to early earlier in her interview where she said one of them had a hole in the side so it wouldn't have shaken it would have had a visual board hole in it but she also says i wish i would have checked them more she also says there's always the possibility and this is me paraphrasing there's always the possibility of there being safety issues or concerns on set and quote that's what i'm supposed to look out for so she is acknowledging that it is her job to stop these things from happening in the interview. They also ask her about the camera crew walking off. Could somebody have been mad? She talks about it's a movie set. We work 12 hour days, seven days a week. We're all a little pissed off with each other, but I don't think anybody's that mad. And she's going um, and explaining why she doesn't think there was sabotage on this set, including 45 rounds at this time are very hard to get and very expensive. And as she is summarizing all those things, she's really telling law enforcement why she doesn't think this was sabotage and landing on the conclusion for her that this is just a really fucked up accident. And that really does summarize what I've seen in the evidence on case two, uh, that a lot of people were reckless and negligent in doing their jobs leading to this accident happening. And that's where we're at as we uh, come back from the court break at the end of, in the middle of day four. All right, let's get you guys back into court before, no, that's not helpful, before I have to zoom. I wanna see what the judge has to say. And then I've got to bounce. Okay, jurors, you may notice some new props at council table. Somebody hold up one of their props. Council table has props? They begged me. So I said, okay. But if anybody spills it, they don't get another one. So in fairness to you all, if you want to bring in some coffee, you may do, oh, look at that. You, <laughs> you may do so, okay? Do you the lawyers brought in coffee. She had told everyone, no hot drinks, just water. So apparently the judge is allowing the lawyers to have coffee and then was like, well, if the lawyers can have coffee, the jury can have coffee. And I'm supposing someone in the jury kind of went, yoink, I've already got my coffee. I was just trying to hide it. So they they definitely need some coffee at this time of day. Do you all, do you all have uh, uh, cups with lids? There are lids in there. Um, okay. I'll just pull them out of the cabinet. Yeah. Okay, that'd be great because this trial is long and you know it's it's warm in here oh that's not helpful she had a coat on before it's because she, in here. <laughs> anyway, so so i think that's helpful to you all because i think that you know especially after lunch i think that you know some of us are like wow it's quite a heavy meal i just had so cheers mm -hmm. your honor everybody feels that all way right, now lunch. for you press i'll let you do it too but just behave and if you <laughs> spill it you're completely out of here. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> which is okay, because, you know, it stains the rug, so, as we all know. All right. So I have, we have a jury question. Okay. Jury question. Sure. 
I'm not leaving. I'm going to be late. I'm leaving after the jury question. I'm, I'm, we're zoom zooming. I'm leaving after the jury question. Emily, do you have to go? Yes. Should you go now? Yes. Are you going to do that? No. Um, is it going to be fine? Maybe. I want to hear the jury question. This is the first Can jury we have question. Closed captions for video. This is the first jury question. And you know what they're asking? They're asking exactly what the fuck the chat has been asking. Can we have closed captioning for the videos? Yep. Y yep. Can we have closed captions for video testimony? There should be a transcript. Okay, so here's the situation. You'll remember that there should be a transcript for the video and they could give the jurors a transcript to read along with the video if that had been done. It was redacted. So um, my judges we, required you, it. Well, first of all, no, the answer is no. They do have some transcriptions, but they have the transcription of the whole thing, of the whole uh, interview, and they've redacted some of it. They didn't redact the transcripts? So that's not going to work. However, we did, um, uh, um, Brian mentioned that you all had some, you know, somebody said that you're having difficulties. So on, on listening to all of it or, or interpreting all of it. So what we're going to do is she's just going to stop from time to time and ask her to repeat what she, what was heard or what was said. Okay. Now, if you really feel like you missed something and, and Ms. Morrissey or Mr. Bowles aren't asking the witness what was what was said what was said raise your hand don't be shy okay because if you'd have told us we could have done that in the other video too and we want you to hear as much they as said they were having a hard time hearing though in the, the courtroom and then of course you can always uh replay it when you're deliberating okay? thank you brian all right thank you uh corporal all right chat Behave if anyone else is streaming. Throughout your investigation, you guys can chat here, be there. It's up to you. Understanding. I will see you soon. That the rounds that were taken out of the gun after the shooting were left on the prop cart. That was my understanding because of the statement Hannah had made um, that when she went to check that weapon to see what was inside of it, that she did it over that prop cart. Okay. And um, along those lines, where was the spent casing that we've now heard testimony uh, was fired from this gun? Where was that spent casing found? It was on top of the prop car. Okay. Um, so we are going to, let me get the exhibit number. I apologize. We are now going to play um, State's Exhibit 68, uh, and, and just for clarification- Chat, give me one sec. I've got to fix a setting uh, here, and it froze the video. Give me one second. Yes. Uh, so we understand that the first video was of the statement on October 21st. What date is this interview taking place? This is November 9th, 2021. Um, I would ask to admit States Exhibit 68 and permission to publish. No objection. Yes, admit it. You may publish. Yeah, I think so. Let's, well, let's let I, the yes, but that uh, control seems to really take it up or down significantly. So it's hard to fine tune it. Um, let me let me see if I can make it better from here, George. And if I can't, we'll push it down one up there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm actually primary on this. Okay. I need to go up a little. Up a little? Okay. Yeah. Let's try it there and see if I can get the, okay. 
I'm totally how you guys make that. <laughs> what do you think? You want I'm kind of like out of it. I can't tell yeah. what this means. Oh, I think everybody can go over Yeah. Um, so it's formality. Does that sound okay? Yeah. okay? I noticed that this microphone's on. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Thank yeah. you. Maybe we can turn off more of these microphones and prevent some of that. Is that one on over there? Um, no? Okay. All right, let's mine's see. Mine's on, and I can turn it off. And I think, Corporal, you can turn yours off as long as you remember to turn it back on when we're talking. Okay. <clears throat> but remember... I'm just going to play it from the beginning. Okay. <laughs> I was kind of like out of it, so yeah. Oh, I think everybody was a little bit that day. Yeah. Um, so it's formality. Um, she signed this the first night. Okay. I'm gonna have you do it again tonight. Just that way we're all in understanding. I know your attorney's here. So this is your statement of rights. Okay. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, do I check all of these? Yeah. Initial them for me. Okay. I like your necklace. Thank you. It's actually a locket. over your um, experience again okay so can you tell me your years of experience with armor okay so pretty much um, mostly really started taking on this armor job in March with my dad uh, we did the movie murder at immigrant Gulch together uh, on the same team I was his assistant and then I did my own uh, did my own job as head armor on the old way after that uh, and then after that, um, I did this, you know, and before that, I had gone on a couple of things with my dad, mostly doing production assistant work, but also still kind of watching him and still kind of learning from him on the side. Okay. Yeah. So, I did Magnificent Seven, like, back in 2015, and we were out there for, like, two months, and I was learning a lot from him then, too. Okay. So pretty much assisting him. Yeah. From 2015 been, until... Yeah, pretty much. And, just, and also, well, not like consistently either because I was in college for a lot of that time. Okay. Yeah. So for a lot of, before this, I was in college. So not really able to do the whole film set thing. Okay. What did you go to college for? Uh, I went to college for communications and film. Okay. Yeah. And I also took a lot of art classes too. So how many uh, productions now do you have under your belt? Um... Uh, what's gonna call it? 
about seven. Seven. Seven, yeah. And then also I did a bunch in college, you know. And then how many with you as head armor? Head armor, just two. Okay. Yeah. So that was the, the rest way. and the old way, yeah. Okay. Um, how long did you spend on the old way? We did that for a month and a week. That's like not that much time. Not that much time. I no. Mean, but um, it was only me doing the guns on it. So it was me, 22 guns, doing all of the loading and everything myself. Okay. Um, what about any official training that you've done? In the uh, last official few training? Uh, not really much official training. So just I was planning on getting my, uh, my uh, concealed carry permit uh, pretty soon, but haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Um, for what you do as an armorer, does this job require to use like specific tools when you're doing inspections on weapons? Uh, so I don't really do the inspections on weapons too much. I'm not a gunsmith by any means, you know. Um, I get them from Seth. Seth, like, you know, maintenance them and everything. I was cleaning a couple of them, and a couple of them did have some issues that I couldn't figure out, so I sent them back to Seth, and he sent them back to me, and they were okay. Okay. So any type of, like, malfunction or anything that you came across would go? Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about Seth Kenny, right? Yeah. Okay. And I sent back one of the guns because the hammer was pulled back, and it wouldn't release back down, and I don't know, he said something about I cleaned it wrong or something. I'm not sure, but I cleaned 17 other pistols that day, so I don't know how I did that one wrong. Okay. Do you remember which one that was? Uh, you know, that was actually one of Miller's guns, and not related to the incident really, but uh, Miller was one of the deputies, and just one of his, the hammer got stuck back, and I've never encountered that before, so I okay. went ahead and sent it back. Okay. <clears throat> um, so, as far as like the movie productions go, do they require you to have any certifications to work? And it can be like, you know, anything. I'm not really sure entirely, um, just because most of the jobs that I've gotten have just been like through word of mouth and everything, or like, you know, Seth works on getting them for me, or my dad gets them for me, or my dad got me on as his assistant the first time, you know, so I'm not really sure entirely what they are looking for. I know that they get a firearms license and everything, and a license for the area to shoot on and everything, um, but they usually get that. I don't even get that usually, so okay. I'm not really sure in terms of what else. I know that Seth always tells me that I'm on his license to work with these weapons, and that's all I really know. And that's kind of the same with Sarah, right? Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. not really sure what that's ever meant. Seth always just says Hannah and Sarah are on my license. Okay. But as far as, like, you go, there's no... Um, no one really asks about much of that. Like, you don't have to take safety classes in regards to anything with movie sets. So that's the thing. I was actually just getting into the union, and mm -hmm. with the union and everything, because on this set they hired me non-union. Um, but normally with the unions, you take a safety course, you take a sexual harassment course, and you take a few different things. And I had, like, literally just gotten the paperwork and everything to get in that. And you need 30 union days on a union show before you can do that. And so I had 22 before this job. And so a lot of the days from this job were going to count towards that. Okay. But, yeah, so I wasn't even able to get that. But for other than that, like, the, the, the whole industry doesn't really require anything. It's mostly just California or union, and I wasn't union. Okay. And so Russ wasn't like, you know, like, I obviously have to have a cert to be a cop. Yeah, no, and totally. Like, like, you know, every year I got to take, like, driving courses and shooting courses and everything like that. Yeah, no, totally. Um, yeah, no, Russ didn't really ask me anything about that. They kind of just conferred it all through Seth. Okay. Um, so I heard that you were hired to do a couple jobs on this set. Yes. Can you talk about or tell me about both of them? Okay. So, uh, like, originally when I got on the set, 
you know, I have always done armor kind of really separate from props. Like I'm always with props, but I usually, we do it ourselves, me and my dad, and props doesn't really interfere. This is the only job that I've taken where I was heavily incorporated into props, and it's because originally they had hired me for armor and key prop assistant. And that's not just like prop assistant, that's the key prop assistant. So that means more responsibility, that means I'm Sarah's second Okay. in a lot of cases. So if there's an issue with props, you would go with, to Sarah, and then if there's an issue the, where Sarah can't, you know, isn't there, then it goes to me, and then we have our assistant, Nicole. So I had, <clears throat> my job is the armor, and originally I thought that I was mostly going to be doing my armor job and kind of left alone to do that, but after the first week, uh, I got talked to by some people in production, and they were told that I wasn't really pulling my weight in props. So basically I was told that I needed to shift my focus less on armor and more on props. Who did they expect to take on the armor role if it wasn't your... I don't know. They told me, they said, yeah, we hear that you're taking your armor job very seriously, but we need you to support props right now because props is also struggling. And I was like, okay, I'll try my best to do that. And they said, normally before that, I would kind of just hang out in the prop truck and like, you know, work on the guns and just kind of be in there doing my own stuff if, the, if there weren't any guns on set. But after that, they had told me like, no, we want you on set. We want you as a present on set for props. Okay. Yeah, so was so, split up quite a bit. Can you give me some examples of what you would do, like when you were assisting props? Okay, yeah. So <clears throat> uh, normally, you know, I kind of like for the saloon scene, I would just kind of be standing there, you know, watching over the guns and everything, checking them for the actors as I had brought them into the actors. That's just my job as the armor. With the saloon and everything. I'm pouring drinks for props. I'm running outside and rolling cigarettes. I'm like doing several different things and grabbing several different pop props and setting props up constantly. And so, yeah, when some scenes aren't exactly super prop heavy and sometimes they're just kind of gun heavy. And so in that case, I can like focus more on the guns, but sometimes I would split between running the guns and also dealing with the props. But Nicole, the assistant, tried to help alleviate that a little bit, but not every, you know, she's she was pretty green, so had to step in a lot. Okay. Yeah. Mostly I thought that I was there doing props at the beginning just to help find everything because we got hired on a week before. Normally you hire the prop master a month in advance. Sarah got brought on a week before I got brought on a little after her. And so we were just kind of running around that first week trying to find props. And then I thought after that, you know, after she got the assistant, I'd be able to focus more on the guns. But then production talked to me and said that I needed to focus more on props. So. Okay. And who's from production? Um, Gabrielle Pickle and um, also the head of the art department, Brian. Mostly, yeah, Sarah just said that I couldn't really support props in the way needed, so they were talking about possibly taking, I was talking to them, and I was like, well, do you not want me to do props at all in this case and just focus on the guns? And they were like, no, like, we don't want Nicole stepping up and taking your position. We want you to step into this position, and we think it's a great opportunity for you, but really, I just got to do two jobs for less pay. Yeah. How yeah. did you feel about the added responsibility? Uh, you know, it was a lot, but uh, I'm super eager, and when someone kind of says, uh, like, you know, you can do this, like, then I'm just like, okay, now I have to show them, like, I can do this, you yeah. know? So, ultimately, it was frustrating, but at the same time, I was like, all right, got to go and kick ass and props now, I guess, too. Yeah. Did you ever have, like, any time that specifically pointed out to you where you felt overwhelmed? Um, well, you know, props, we were told a lot, you know, that we were kind of lagging and like the Wranglers would kind of shit on us for not propping up horses soon enough or like not getting actors propped up soon enough. So props was definitely struggling. And then after um, that talk I had with Brian, I went to Sarah and I was like, I'm not like pulling my weight, you know. And I tried to talk to her about it and she was like, yeah, I didn't mean to like 
be a jerk about it. I just wanted to let them know that I needed more help in the department. And so we talked about it and I was like, well, that's cool. Just maybe next time go ahead and talk to me first before going to Brian and Gabrielle. Um, do you know why they didn't utilize Nicole? They, uh, well, we, you know, we definitely did utilize Nicole, but ultimately I have a very strong personality and also a lot of the time, like my personality would even be stronger than Sarah's in a lot of respects. And, um, a lot of people were already kind of gaining respect for me, like in terms of like, you know, the Wranglers and everything. And I'm just good at meshing with other departments, okay. you know, so they wanted me on set more just to kind of, you know, be a presence of props and really, you know, kind of just be a demanding force. Okay. Yeah. Um, did you ever express to them at any point if you felt overwhelmed or? Um, after that, you know, I thought we were doing pretty good of managing both. There were some days, you know, where I would talk to Sarah and I was like, like she would be like, could you come out here and see what's going on with me? And I was like, no, dude, I need to like focus on guns and I need to pull guns for later on. And she would be like, well, you're the second. I think you should be here with me on set to watch this. And I was like, there's not a lot of props out there. I'm going to be here doing the guns. Okay. So there was a couple of times, but I also kind of really held my ground on not, you know, spreading myself too incredibly thin. Or getting over in by... Yeah. Other. Yeah, exactly. Because okay. you kind of just have to, you know. But ultimately, with higher positions, sometimes you get ran over. Okay. Uh, who hired you for Rust? Uh, I believe. I'm not really sure. Steph just texted me and he was like, "You got the job, prop assistant, so and so." I sent him my resume and they, uh, Sarah sent it in and I think Roe approved it. And yeah, so Sarah, Sarah hired me. Roe approved it. It's not like a typical hiring process for a job where you have to go in. Yeah, no, there's no, there's no real interviews like any time in film. Film is a very weird industry. Word of mouth. Word of mouth by all means. I think it's so weird how like secretive it is almost. You know, like it's really hard to get on anything unless you know somebody. And if you stop working for a while, it's like almost hard to jump back in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's really weird. You can't just like look up like film jobs in your area and then go and apply. It's not that's Indeed. not a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I really wish it was kinda like that. That would probably yeah, that'd be a lot better. But right now there's just such a media surge especially that, you know, they're just kind of getting on anyone that they can bring really because the media surge with all of these different uh, like the networks and everything coming out with their own little internet things. It's making everything like boom right now like crazy. Yeah. Um, I know you had talked about how you were in the process of becoming a union member. Yeah. With which union? Uh, I was working on becoming a union member with the local 44. Okay. That's the oldest and longest established union and it's also the one that my dad's a part of. So. Is that like international or? Um, I'm not really entirely sure. I know it's mostly California. You know, each union is kind of specific to the area. Um, yeah, I think that one is the most put together one and it's definitely the most active one, which is why I was trying to be a part of it. And I had already actually started the like kind of OSHA safety one a little bit after this actually. So I had already been starting that because okay. I just got in like a little bit before that into the program. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as far as your employment on Rust, were you hired on a contract, or how? I was how hired. You it? I was hired on a on a contract. Yeah. You know, uh, the the contract wasn't really specific to the job per se. The contract was just like regular employee contract. Jason has a copy of it. Okay. Is there any way I can get a copy? Sure, yeah, I'll send that. Yeah. Um, besides you and Sarah and Nicole, were there any other armorers or prop masters or anybody run onto the set at any time? Um, I don't believe so. Not anyone brought on the set. Uh, I don't really know if Seth ever came to set, but he was the mentor on the paperwork and everything, and he was like 
where we got most of our stuff from. Okay. Yeah. But no one else ever worked with you guys. They didn't do like a late hire. Oh, so they did. They did bring in one girl for swing shift, but I don't even know if she ever made it to set or if she just met up with Sarah outside of set. Okay. Um, but yeah, we had finally week two is coming around, and we told them like we're it's getting crazy busy. We can't have Sarah leaving set to go find these things. So they brought in a day player that could run around and go find things for us. Okay. Because before that, Sarah had to leave set a lot of the time. Oh, that also contributed to spreading us thin for a little while there. That's why they brought in the third person because ultimately Sarah would have to leave set pretty much every day for several hours and then it would just be me out there. And what would Sarah go do? Sarah would go try to find props because with them bringing her in a week, you know, it's hard to find like a weird Indian axe, you know, like <laughs> there's a bunch of weird obscure things for a period piece that are super hard to find. So she would go try to find them, meet up with other prop masters in the area and see if they had them. Do you know who that fourth was? Um, you know, I think her name was Jade. Jade? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was hoping for her to come more on set, but yeah, they just hired her as a day player every now and then. Okay. Okay, so as far as um, and I know some of this that we've talked about before, um, some of it might be a little bit redundant. It's okay. Um, but yeah. just trying to come to all bases. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, who provides the ammo? So, as far as I'm concerned, me and Sarah, <clears throat> we went together and we picked up the ammunition and all the weapons and my leathers from Seth Kenny in Albuquerque at his shop. Um, yeah, we got two boxes of ammo, I'm pretty sure, that day. And then um, as we went on in the show, there were a couple of times that we needed more. So Sarah and I would text him, you know, that we needed more. And occasionally Sarah brought in more ammo from Seth. Okay. Those two boxes that were originally supplied, were they blanks or dummies? originally supplied um, that you picked up two boxes of them. Oh yeah, so um I or think they were like boxes like the white boxes. No, they were they were they were like bigger boxes okay. for sure. Um yeah, no, a lot of them were uh, there wasn't a lot of dummies in those really much at all. There were some dummies, you know, like obscure yeah. dummies that we couldn't really get like uh the 50, 70 rounds, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with those, those are big rounds, they go in the trap door. So we had some of those dummies with it. But in terms of 45 long colt dummies, I don't think there was a lot of dummies in there. And so I asked Seth about it and I said, hey, like where's all the long colt dummies? Because the 45, you know, 45 ammo is like different than 45 long colt. So we didn't exactly, I couldn't find that. So. I he told me to check the dummies that I had from the last show because he got me those ones and everything. And so I went back through a bag that I had. This bag had like a bunch of loose dummies in it. And I went through and I checked all of them and I put them into two boxes. And so we had two boxes of 45 long quilt dummies that were mine from the last show well, originally. Cage. Yeah. Okay. And I had just brought those off of the old way and they were in my car. For like two weeks, I jumped right off of the old way into this. I was barely home for like a week. So, yeah. so he told you to check your stuff. Yeah. And what you had to take it. Yeah. So he authorized you to bring. He authorized me to bring, yeah, dummies. Okay. And then also there was one time where he didn't give us any eighth loads, and I had one box of eighth loads, and so I was like. So corporal. Just to be clear, what we just heard, um, did Ms. Gutierrez tell you that she brought two boxes of dummies onto the set of rust that she had left over from the old way? Yes. And did she also explain that they were loose in a bag in her car and they had been there for two weeks? That's correct. And did she explain that she took them out of the bag and put them in boxes? Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna use my box of A loads, put it on the invoice, 
and I would have received money for that. For okay. blanks. For blanks, yeah. A flow of blanks. Okay. Did you ever get recompensated for this? Uh, no, I don't really plan on it, uh, given the circumstances, um, because usually that goes through Seth, and then Seth kicks me down with whatever. Okay. Yeah. So, how many rounds, and, I, and two boxes is, you know, kind of hard for us to, we're just trying to understand, so how many rounds would you say were supplied at the beginning? You know, Mind if I check my phone really yeah. quick? I think Seth like sent me a picture of like it written on cardboard or yeah. something. Okay. Or actually, if you look at the boxes, I think the boxes on the flap. Yeah, on the flap should say it. Okay. Did you see that at all? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't. That's the yeah. Okay. 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 That's what Seth showed me. So that same thing. That's what should have all been in there. Okay. Um, and so you and Sarah picked it up at the beginning yeah. of production. Yeah. Um, from Albuquerque, brought it to set. And then yeah, but we couldn't exactly bring it to set right away because they hadn't had the prop truck ready for us. So we had to leave it. You know, she had the guns in her car in Albuquerque. I had the ammo in my trunk at the hotel. And then we just took them to set the next day. Okay. So it was less than like Overnight, a, yeah. Just overnight. overnight. It was like multiple days that that's a uh, multiple days of what? That's I was just gonna say for Sarah to keep all those in her vehicle in Albuquerque. That's the mm -hmm. well, move. Well, and it was only it was only one night, and she had a garage. Okay. So that's why we ultimately she was like, "Do you want them to go with you or me?" And I was like, "You, you have a garage, you know." Oh, oh, I know. I told her. <laughs> she was all like, "Get those and get out," and I was like, "Hell yeah." Um. So when you guys brought additional rounds on the set or additional boxes or needed more, how did those get delivered? Uh, Sarah brought them in most okay. of the time. I never saw Seth after the first time that I saw him before the show. Okay. So did Sarah, do you know if she went and picked them up from Albuquerque or how did she get them? She, she lived in Albuquerque, so most of the time she would just run and grab them. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if she got any more from anyone else. I had heard that some of the dummies were borrowed from someone. I don't know. She said, don't lose any of these because we have to give them back. And I was like, okay, they fall out of the gun belt and everything, but I'll try not to lose them. Okay. And then how much did you supply of your own? Of my own dummies? Yeah. Just the two. And we mostly went through those right away just because mm -hmm. two boxes, two of the little boxes, not like big boxes, just the, the little boxes. And yeah, I had two of those and some, most of mine had the no primer caps, the ones that I showed you, remember? Is it the ones that are like indented in? Yes. Okay. So a lot of those were mine. And then also uh, I had a multitude of the ones with holes and the ones you shake. So yeah. And I checked those all and I put them into two things. Okay. Myself, yeah. Do you remember what those boxes look like? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, they usually say JS on them. Okay. Um, this is one that my dad sent me. And mine are usually beat up pretty bad. Like okay. they're very dirty and uh, gross usually. Okay. Do you know what the JS stands for in them? Uh, Joe Swanson. Okay. Have you met Joe? I have not, but him and my dad are pretty good friends. Okay. Yeah. Let me stop it there for a moment. Um, Corporal, did Ms. Gutierrez uh, show you a photograph on her phone during the interview? Yes, she did. And did she indicate to you that the photograph that she was showing you was a photograph of the box uh, or a box that would be like the box that she brought onto the set that had dummies? Yes. And did she tell you who she got that photo from? She um, said in her interview that she got that photo from her father, which is Bell Reed.
And I'm going to show you what has uh, previously been uh, admitted into evidence as State's Exhibit 69. Do you see that? Yes. Is that the exact photo that she showed you during the interview? Yes, it is. Thank you. Does this look exactly like the uh, box of dummies that Mr. Benavides took from the prop cart on October 21st, 2021? Yes, it looks exactly like it. Thank you. All right, so as far as ammo goes, who has access? Um, and they stay, they stay in the truck, like, um, you know, the only thing that's in the safe is the guns. So, yeah, pretty much, I don't know if they locked the prop truck at night or what happened with that, but, yeah, so pretty much just me, Nicole, Sarah, and the first week we did share that prop truck with locations. Okay. Um... But other than that, the prop truck, you know, would kind of be open most days just because we're running in and out of there. And sometimes, you know, ammo is underneath on our cart, just chilling there usually. Like on the floor of the shelf? On the bot, no, on the cart. Okay, on yeah. the second shelf. Yes, yeah. Okay. I usually try to keep it down there. So all the ammo is pretty much out in the open? Pos yeah. I mean. Yeah, unless it wasn't like taken out directly of the boxes or anything, then yeah, the ones that are out there are out in the open pretty much regularly. Okay, and they never get locked up in a safe? No. Okay. Um, were all the guns provided by Seth? Yes. And who has access to the guns? Uh, Sarah and I, and I believe Nicole kind of knew the, the code, but I don't think she remembered it most of the time. Okay. Yeah. Did she ever remove the guns from the safe? I had her put them away sometimes. Okay. Mostly just because I couldn't leave that. Okay. Yeah. And does anybody watch her do that? Uh, no, not really. Is, it, is she allowed to? Um, mostly somebody has to lock them up and they shouldn't be on set, so... You know, Sarah or I would give her permission to go over there and just put them in there. Okay. Yeah. But that's something that you guys are allowed to do is give someone else permission. To I would think up. for a prop assistant, yeah. Okay. She only puts them away ever. So who all has the ability to lock the safe? I mean, anyone that has arms, like, can close it. You know. Is that you don't have to punch in the code again to lock it? No. So you turn the knob and it's done? Yeah. Okay. Um, what about the truck? Who has the ability to lock the truck? You know, none of us lock the truck ever. Um, we figure that's kind of like a transpose job. We don't have locks for the trucks normally. Uh, I know some prop masters lock up their own trucks, but yeah, I'm not really sure. We kind of just closed ours up every day. Okay. Do you know I don't know if Transpo ever lost it. Okay. Do you know who was in charge of that truck? Um, not specifically. Okay. I don't remember his name. It was a male, though? Yeah. Can you describe him? He was a sweet old Hispanic man with a nice mustache. Okay. Have you said Midway? Midway. Okay. And he was the one primarily in charge of that truck? Towards like the second week, yeah. Before that, we kind of just had random people moving it. Um, and then eventually he got assigned to us pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the morning when you got there, was it ever locked up? No. Okay. So you just walk in? Walk in and pull the handle. Okay. What about the back of it? I know it's got one of those big... Yeah, that's what we normally did. Yeah, we... Uh, just closed up the side and we would unlock the handle. We figured it was usually getting watched by security. 
Do they just have security? And it's okay if you don't know, but do they just have security at that front gate there, or do they have? I know that I've seen some security around other parts of set, like just in a car, but that was mostly after the incident and everything, and it was just a car near the church. Okay. So that's really all I know about the security measures. So you say, um, as far as ammo goes, it is common to have it outside of the safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's super common to have it outside of the safe. Okay. Who loads the ammo into the guns? Me and Sarah. Okay, you both load them. Yeah. And who loads ammo into like the bandoliers or the belts? And that's me and Sarah again. Uh, I think Nicole helped us a couple of times shaking them. Okay. Yeah. Did she ever like actually load them, or did she just shake them and the, say they're good? And she would shake them and put them into the belt with me. Okay. Yeah. Do you know how often? Or should I say when did you guys put the ammo in the bandoliers? Um, a lot of them already had it in there. So from the last Nick Cage set and everything, so still check those ones out and everything. But we. Of course, had a couple more that we had to like switch around and everything. So mostly the whole first week, we were switching them around, and then after that, we did have a couple more characters come in with different, you know, waist sizes. So we would have to like put them in other belts too. So some of these belts already had rounds in them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you remember which ones? Yeah. No. They mostly, yeah, they mostly got switched around a lot, and a lot of them fell out pretty regularly out of the, the rounds in them. Yeah, okay. the dummy rounds would fall out sometimes just because when they're riding the horses, they jiggle out. Okay. Um, they regularly have to put more in them. So since some of this ammo came from another production, was the ammo in those belts ever checked? Yeah. So you guys physically removed them from the belts? Yeah. And checked them? Yes. Okay. And who all did the checking? That was me. That was involved in the two boxes that I did. At the beginning? Yes. All right. Um, so when ammo's not being used, then does it ever go back in a box? Does it stay? When ammo's not being used, um, if it's about to be used, it's there on the bottom of the cart. Like if we're going to get into it later that day, we don't really have time to run back to the truck. So we usually keep it right there if we're shooting that day. If we're not shooting that day, it doesn't really come on set. I'll usually bring like maybe a box of quarter loads just in case they randomly decide that they want to shoot something because they'll change their minds last minute and then you have to be prepared for that. Who's they? Uh, directors, actors, whoever just like feels like, mm, maybe I should be shooting right now, kind of. Okay. So when you go to unload the belts or the guns, anything of the sort, um, does it go back in a box? The belts? The like we, we don't ever take, once the, once the, the dummies are on the belt, they stay on the belt, and the belts just get hung in the prop truck. Okay. Like, yeah. And then uh, for the guns and everything, yeah, we take all the dummies out if it's dummied up, and then, of course, we take the flanks out, too. And, but where do they go? They go back in a box. Okay. Or sometimes the dummies, they'll go on the cart, on the top of the cart. Okay. So would you say that animals ever mixed? The dummies and the blanks? Or just, you know, various kinds of dummies? Well, various kinds of dummies, yeah. Like I told you all, dummies are kind of weird and individual in their own way, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, they were mixed pretty regularly. Okay. So it's not like, you know, I say, hey, I take these rounds out of here and they have to go back in that specific box because these are... No, they just go in a dummy box. Okay. In a box of dummies. Um, so our actors are, or crew members on set, are they um, advised to self-inspect weapons? Uh, I'm not really sure. I Well, most of the time when they tell me, like I'll go up to them and I'm like, here, and I show them it's clear, they'll be like, it's okay, I trust you. I say, don't trust me. 
you know, go ahead and always check for yourself. Okay. But, um, but yeah. Are not required to self-check? No, not really. Okay. But I do, I do show them them every time before I hand them off to them. All right. Um, show them that the gun's clear. Have you seen any of them do their own safety checks? Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Jensen does his own safety checks. Uh, Travis does his own safety checks. Travis and Mel. Um, uh, Devin was getting into doing his own safety checks because I taught him how to do it. So he was kind of getting better at that. Uh, what do they do to do these checks? Pull the hammer back to half cock, spin it around, and close it. Okay. Yeah. So not pulling it round out, checking them themselves? No, not really. Okay. Um, has it ever been common practice for actors to do? I'm not really too sure. What about on your last production? Did they ever do their own? Uh, Nick Cage definitely did not. Uh, he barely really cared to train with the gun at all. Um, a lot of actors sometimes will barely care to train with the gun at all and think that they'll just do it on the day. Um, and But yeah, no, not a lot of them take it out and check them. Okay. Um, when you or somebody gives a gun to an actor, um, do you tell them like, hey, these are the rounds that are in this gun? Like, do you tell them it's hot or cold? And then what kind of ammo is in the gun? Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Yeah. <laughs> so I tell them, I tell them, all right, so this is a clear gun if there's no dummies in it, right? If it's dummied up, I show them and I say this is dummied up and usually I have the dummies that have no primer cap in there. So I'll show them that. And then if it's hot, I'll tell them it's hot and I'll tell them four quarter loads or four eighth loads or whatever is in the gun. Yeah, okay. and I let them know exactly how many is in there. And I put it exactly to where they'll shoot it and it'll go for that time. Have you ever allowed access um, to anyone for any of these firearms? No. Like for using them on set or? For any purpose that well, I allow outside of what their scope was. No. Um, like after hours, during lunch? No. You know? Days that you guys weren't. No, we, me, Nicole, and Sarah ate lunch together pretty regularly, and pretty much every day, except for a couple of days where I would sit at another table or converse with some other people. But yeah, we all went to lunch together. We all locked them up every day at lunch, and we all locked them up every night. And I definitely didn't go to work on my weekends because why would I do that? You know, right. I want to be there as least as possible. <laughs> 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 Don't we all? Yeah. So yeah, last weekend I wasn't. I was in Denver the first weekend actually. So yeah. Then the other one I was just relaxing in my hotel. Okay. Um, did you spend any time with anybody on the weekend? Yeah, I spent some time uh, with the nice boy at the front desk at my hotel. He was nice. Um, I hung out with some crew members. I went bowling one time. And other than that, I didn't really hang out with people outside of that too much. And I kind of went and did my own thing in Denver the week before. We haven't really been there that long. Okay. Um, did you go out, this, this is kind of in, did you go out um, with the crew one night too? I think they said like um, some brewery. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we went to the brewery downtown after bowling. After bowling? Yeah. Okay. And that was on a day off though? Yeah. Did you have work the next day? No, that was uh, Monday. We worked, we we had Monday, Tuesday off. Okay, do you remember which Monday it was? It was the last Monday before the incident. Okay. So 20th was the incident, I believe, on Wednesday? 21st. 21st, so. The 11th? The, the Monday. Columbus Day is a holiday. Or would that be the 18th? No. Yeah, it would be the it would be the 18th. Okay. So you were off that Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. 
we're back. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, have you yourself, and not just on this side, but have you ever um, encountered a defective blank or a defective dummy? Yeah. So, you know, I've had a couple of blanks that haven't gone off, you know, but usually that's because the actor doesn't pull the hammer all the way back. And so it'll just be at half cock. And so when they shoot it, it won't ignite it. And I usually just say like, oh, it was a misfire to kind of save the actor's face a little bit in that case. Mm -hmm. um, and then for, in terms of bad dummies, I had never experienced a bad dummy. Okay. Um, so what's your standard protocol, like if one of them's defective? Either the dummies or the blanks? Either one. Okay, so if the blanks are defective, you know, um, usually I'll just take them, I'll put them in my pocket, I'll save them for later, and then if I'm curious enough, I'll just go ahead and like shoot them and be like, okay, yeah, they didn't pull the hammer all the way back. Or if the if the dummies were defective, I guess, I would put them in my pocket and just save them to later and check them out. Okay. Um, have you ever in your history of working encountered live rounds on the set? Never. Okay. And how do you know that? Uh, because every dummy I've ever shaken has been a dummy and the other ones have holes in the side and I've never experienced the round that looked like a dummy and behaved like a blank or anything. So yeah, I am shaking all of them most of the time. Okay. So. And then I know you've said this a million times, but just do me a favor, go over uh, each round and then how the round. Gutierrez tell you she was shaking all of them. Is your microphone off? Sorry. Did Ms. Gutierrez tell you that she was shaking all of them most of the time? Yes. Thank you. Each round of blanks? Okay. And dummies. So I know okay. that there's like obviously a couple different kinds of dummies. All right, yeah. Okay. You don't have to go into like no, every okay. specific caliber or anything of this sort, but just. Okay. Let's, uh, all right. So. A lot of the dummies, the ones with primer caps, those ones mostly go in the belts and everything. Uh, a lot of the primer caps are punctured most of the time, you know, because they get hit while they're in the gun. So those will go in the gun sometimes uh, if I don't have the other ones. There are some with holes in the side uh, that also still have the primer caps and everything. And then there's the ones with no primer caps and there's no, and there's a hole in the side sometimes too with those and sometimes there's not. Um, and mostly I like to put the ones with no primer caps into the guns, you know, just to make everyone feel safe. Um, and then for the other ones, those go in the belts, you know, and uh, the ones that have the primer caps. Corporal, is it your understanding from your investigation that uh, the dummies that were put into Mr. Baldwin's prop gun on October 21st, 2021, uh, all had missing primer caps? No. Uh, and the hole inside are good for both, really. Okay. And then, and then the for all the lows, yeah, all right. So for all the blanks, all the quarters, um, so there's eight lows. Those are the super quietest ones. And I just worked with Brian Armstrong that little 11 year old on the old way and I had her use those. So especially if it's someone that's really young and new with the guns, I'll make sure that there's the smallest load possible, which is an eighth. Um, some horses require eighth loads. Um, most of the time I'll put horsey, I'll put the box and I'll put horsey rounds on them in my own handwriting. So that way I know. Um, and are those the eighths? Yeah, those are the eighths. And then sometimes, you know, um, I will, if it's, Super close proximity and inside eighths too. But quarters also work for inside proximities that are close. Um, and then on top of that, uh, for the quarters around kids, around horses too. That's like the last size pretty much allowed. And then we do the half loads if it's going into like a rifle or if we're outside. Like we did a lot of half loads on the show because a lot of it was outside. And then for the full loads, 
it's very rare still that I use a full load, unless like an actor is just really weird and wants it. Uh, Alec only wanted to train his full loads because he wanted it to look realistic. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, most of the time I'll use full loads if it's a really big gun, like a trapdoor or something, a trapdoor rifle. You That would have a lot of smoke coming out of it, so you want to make sure it looks realistic. Okay. Um, were all of these used for rust? Folds were used for rust, some of my eighths were used for rust, quarters were used for rust, and halves were used for rust, yeah. Okay. So it was really a variety and just depending on the situation. Okay. And then, is anyone allowed to bring their personal firearms on the set? Uh, no. Did you see anybody bring personal firearms? No. And did you ever see anyone bring ammo? No. Okay. Did anybody ask you about going target shooting? Uh, yeah. The 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 Wrangler has made a joke about it one time to me, and I said something to the effect of, "Well, you can try. You don't have the ammo." Okay. What did they say? Do you remember? Uh, not really. I don't really remember what they said, but they insinuated about shooting actual rounds. Yeah. Okay. I think that they were joking, though. Okay. A lot of boys on set will be like, oh my god, can we go shoot the gun? Yeah. But no one pressured you into it? No, no one ever seriously pressured me into it. Uh, what about Sarah? What about Sarah? Did, did she ever mention anything about shooting? No. Sarah, yeah, no, she never mentioned anything about shooting, and we left every day at the same time and pretty much got there just around a little after each other. Okay. Um, so as far as safety protocols on set, um, do you recall any sort of safety protocols during the time of the production? Um, we had a couple of safety meetings. A lot of days we did not which normally it's typical any time that there's firearms or live animals on set or open flame, you do a safety meeting. So a lot of those days that we did not have a safety meeting. Um, other than that, Who safety hosted them? Huh? Who hosted those safety meetings? Dave. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember what they were about? Um, Guns, my, the guns and everything. We also said, you know, because actors will leave guns around sometimes, they'll forget them. So we always told people, you know, like, don't ever touch a gun if you see it, you know, because Jensen totally left his on the snack bar one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we, we found that pretty promptly. But. Isn't your uh, snack bar down at base camp? No. Where was it? It's on set. We can't like go all the way back to base for okay. snacks. Well, so I was like, oh. no. Our cafe I think you're thinking of the cafeteria. Yeah, we do that. Yeah, no. We have crafty on set, really close to set most of the time. Okay. Yeah. I was like, oh, that would be interesting. You're talking about the snack bar, like the little like trailer that has all the. No. It's just crafty. It's just a table on set with some like nutritious bars on it. My favorite part of getting to work movie sets. Oh yeah, have, like, a little I trailer. love when they have the trailer. Yeah, oh, those are the legit ones. This one was like stupid cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they like barely <laughs> let her make soup for us. They barely <laughs> met, let her make soups for us, and she had to fight hard for the soup. Mm -hmm. I called Becca the soup angel. She fought hard for those soups. <laughs> um, did you ever see safety bulletins? Where would they be posted, I wonder? Um, you know, sometimes they would put some things in the call sheet, you know, like some safety bulletins and everything. Do you remember what they said? Um, I think they would pertain to COVID. They would pertain to, you know, like firearms on set. They would pertain to live animals. Uh, yeah, it's usually kind of like in red on the call sheet. Okay. Other than that, they would sometimes in an email, like, put it in red, like, anything you needed to know about the day. Do you still have those emails? I have, I think I might have some of those emails still. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to yes, grab those? those yeah, because sure. 
Mm-hmm. Um, that's, you know, obviously. Yeah. yeah. A big, uh, who distributes, because you guys would get call sheets the night before. Yeah. Right. Tim, Tim with the Zara usually sent them out. Okay. Yeah. What is his position? He is also an assistant director, but he's more of the type where he is never on set and his only job is sitting in the office and creating these schedules and doing all the paperwork. So he's normally out. Um, yeah, he's normally never on set, that poor boy. All right. Who would you say is in charge of those safety meetings that were being held? Dave, and then uh, the first time we did it, he let me speak. Um, yeah. And I told people, you know, like, these are regular weapons we have on set. Don't stand in front of them. Don't point them at anybody. And then after that, the only other one we had was the day of, and Dave kind of just covered most of that. Okay. Do you remember what he talked about the day? Not entirely. He just told everybody, like, you know, we do have, like, blanks on set. We are going to have a lot of gunfire today. Real guns on set. No one touched them, you know. And things like that, and also things about the horses, he told. When did you host a safety meeting? I never hosted one all by myself. Okay. What did you said that he let you do one, though? He let, me, he let me hop in on his. Okay. Yeah, he said, Hannah, do you have anything else to add? And I said, yeah. And I said, let's be safe. You know, like, no one be standing in the way of these things, and just, like, don't be, if it's pointing in that direction, don't stand in front of it. Okay. Do you remember what day that was, though? <laughs> that was... The first day we had gunfire on set, which I believe was the second day that uh, we started uh, on set uh, filming. Okay. So, yeah. So, what do you teach um, actors or crew members when it comes to gun safety? So it really um, also depends on the actors too. You know, like big ones like Nick Cage, if they tell me, if or if they tell the director, like you know, they, that they don't really care to do it, I can try to teach them for the most part. But like a lot of the times, they might not even listen to me or really pay attention or be on their phone. Alec was on his phone a lot of that entire thing. But for the most part, uh, they put me in training this time. It was pretty irregular how I trained actors this time. This time, they put nine people all together in one day okay. that I was supposed to train. And during this time, they put a ton of producers right there. Normally, I train the actors one-on-one. -on -one. It makes them feel comfortable. It allows them to not be distracted and everything. And this time they had me training three people at once and um, a ton of producers behind me. The director is there too. The producers are talking to the actors. The actors were distracted even too. Um, and I tried to do my best to work with all three of them. I worked with Jensen. You could probably see a video of him saying like, she showed me like, this is how you check it. You know, this is how we make sure it's safe. So I try to do that standard same thing every time, show them how to check their own gun and show them how to make sure it's safe. Um, and then I always talk, I have them draw it a few times, you know, with nothing in there, make sure that they have the draw down. Uh, usually a little before that, I'll have them like just fire off a couple of quarter loads, you know, so they can get the idea of not drawing it from their thing, but just holding it and firing it so they can get, so they can understand what they're going to be doing. Okay. And then after that, we work on uh, the actions that they're going to specifically do. So, you know, if I know that they have a scene and everything, we kind of talk it out together and like how they would run, pull it out, what they could do, you know, how not to let it fall on the ground, how not to like let rocks get inside of it. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. What about safety rules? Do you advise them any of those? Safety rules such as I tell them all the time uh, not to point them at each other. Uh, that's my biggest one. And I always say to everyone in front of them, I'm like, if you don't have to be here, don't be here. You know, um, other than that, safety wise, um, I tell them to keep their finger out of the trigger guard unless they're ready to shoot because that's how a lot of. Um, Accidental discharges will happen, and that's just what my dad's told me at least. 
So I always try to advise them to keep their finger out of the trigger guard and yeah. Okay. Um, besides you, were there any other trained armorers on the set? Mm -hmm. Sarah was kind of trained by Seth. Yeah. I believe Sarah did a show before, and I think that there were two guns involved in the show. And Seth had trained her personally for that. Okay. And then I also kind of showed her what to do at the beginning of it to make sure that she wouldn't have an accidental discharge. But she still did so. Yeah. Um, so before any um, gun scene, even just like rehearsal or filming or anything of the sort, did they do a brief? Uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes they would have time to like really go into it and everything and like kind of, you know, work out the action. Sometimes they would do like an overall one, you know, where they kind of just say like bang, 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 bang. So we did have some rehearsals. Sometimes, you know, there wasn't always rehearsals. Okay. So sometimes, yeah, we totally had like rehearsals, usually the big ones, and we just kind of have people go bang, 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 bang. All right. Um, as far as so what it's been referred to as the show and tell day, where you brought out. Yeah. Um, pretty much everything, right? Yeah, we brought out every gun that we had that Seth gave to us and uh, the director really just wanted a lot of options for people especially because there are so many big names on this so he wanted to be sure that all the actors knew that it was possible for them to switch around with guns and that just because we had thought that they would look good with that gun doesn't mean that they were stuck with it. Okay um, can you go into a little bit more detail about how this day played out like where did you guys set up this table? Okay. And yeah. So the day played out. Um, we go to the edge of the town and everything, uh, away from all the people working on the other side. Um, they set up a table. They set up an easy up for us. And um, the prop truck was coming later that day. So that was finally the first day that we got Council. to get the prop truck going. I brought. How long does she go into the day? No, all right. I'm sorry, I don't recall. Was it more than 20 minutes? Let's let's break so that we can have this uninterrupted what went on in the day. And, and, and just, just to be clear, I think what she's talking about is the day of the show and tell. Is, oh. that, is that your understanding, Corporal? Yes. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I thought it was the day of October 21. I don't believe so. Okay, thank you. Do you want me to keep going or you want to break? No, we'll keep going. Sorry. The gun safe in my tiny Hyundai fitted in there. And so I had that with me right next to us. And I kept all the ammunition in my trunk and everything. And I kept, and Sarah had all of the guns in her trunk. And so we took all those guns out of the trunk and we put them on the table. We had two tables. So we had two tables filled with long rifles, short guns, a lot of guns. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also, once the show and tell was over, um, Joel was pretty cool. He was happy with everything. Um, after that was over, he stuck around. And then, like, I think the first couple of actors showed up for training and everything. Because I remember they said, like, okay, you're going to have, like, three at this time and, like, three here and three there. And I was like, all right, like, that's kind of manageable. And it is kind of manageable, you know, and it definitely I've worked with two at a time before. Three is manageable, but like also then all of a sudden with the actors, all these producers came, like a ton of producers. And so the producers are just kind of behind us the whole time. The guns are out there. We put a lot of them away that we didn't need for the training that day. So Sarah put a lot of those away. And we just kept those in my car because I had the safe and ultimately I was going to put them in the safe at the end of the day. Um, and then so the actors came, we started training and everything. And then all of a sudden a producer just like jumps into the training because I guess he was also firing, but they didn't schedule him for me. So at one point I was training four people at one time, which is a little chaotic. Um, yeah. So. So when you have them, sorry, but when you have them all 
out on the table, how many people would you say were there, like, max at a time that were? Probably, like, ten. Messing. Ten, and, like, not everyone was really allowed to mess with them, you know, like, a couple producers, like, would ask if they could touch them. Ultimately, I always get pissed at people if they touch them without my permission. Okay. Joel, I let do that. You know, Joel is the director. He can touch them. Um, but, yeah, other than that, most people were there, and most people would be, like, wouldn't even ask to touch them. Yeah, good, like, ten producers were there. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Gabby and Ro were there at the beginning, and eventually, like, they left with kind of everybody. Okay. And then yeah. towards the end of the So at the beginning of the day, I was supposed to train six, uh, and then I had an hour-long break, you know, um, and I think I was there from, like, nine to, like, two or eight to, yeah, nine to two, just training actors pretty much the entire time um, and doing the show and tell. And then so I trained six of them then, and then plus that producer that they threw in there randomly. And then after that, an hour went by, and I trained Devin, and I trained Miller. And, yeah. And the last guy didn't show up. Okay. Who was yeah. the producer that you trained? Nathan. Okay. Do you remember his last name? Mm, no, not really. He was on set a lot. He was, like, a nice, uh, nice younger one, kind of. Okay. How long would you say you spent with? Each group training? Uh, with each actor, probably like mm, 30, 20 minutes okay. or so. Yeah, usually I like to work with the actors one on one and get like a full 30 minutes to an hour in, you know? But that's just not how it went on this one. Who made that call? Uh, Gabri Gabrielle. Okay. Did she give you a time limit? She just put three people together, like, she scheduled it like that, and she said they had other things to do and had other, you know, they had to go and do training with the Wranglers, and a lot of this training was, like, the day before. Yeah, they're like, ride a horse now, and now you get to shoot a gun, and, like, yeah. And you get to shoot a gun off a horse. So yeah, honestly, it's crazy, because a lot of the times they have actors start working with the horses, like, months in advance, because you can grasp grasp the guns a little quicker than like a weird living animal and all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, they didn't have people training on horses well in advance for this either, which I thought was pretty wild. Another total off subject, but I was, you know, we brought Jensen in here and spoke to him and I found out that the gentleman who provided the horses for this set, I used to actually be a wrangler for him. Oh, really? Well, That's yeah. fun. Isn't he so cute? His horses are terrifying. Yeah, no, the horses are scary. I, I honestly, I was trying to get out of Western because every Western I'm on, a horse almost killed me. Yeah. Shit, you not. Like, horses back up crazy. And, like, no one even said, like, not to walk behind the horses on this. And I was like, Sarah, Sarah. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Like, you know, I was just, like, the complete lack of just, like, yeah. Yeah, I used to wrangle for him. And yeah. I love Val. He's, but... he's a sweetheart. But, yeah, the horses are bad. But, honestly, like, it's been a long time since I've been able to work with any really good horses because I have been doing independence. You know, no one can afford, like, the good horses that Magnificent Seven had back when I was there in 15, you know. Well, he used to do all kinds of, like, trail rides and stuff like that, too, but... I mean, he, I can tell you, like, because he goes, when they do trail rides, they go, up, you know that mountain that has a cross on it down at the end of oh, yeah. Bonanza? Yeah. So he used to take the horses up that mountain. Yeah. And I just remember one day he put me on a, on a uh, thoroughbred that came off the track, a mare. And, like, sh she was hot. She was uh -huh. a hot horse. Yeah. And so he, like, slightly drugged her up before oh, wow. this trail ride. Yeah, like, I remember a couple of the horses. <laughs> she was off in her own world. We'll just say that. Oh, yeah, man. a couple of the horses got loose on this. One, like, made a full-ass run for it, like, wow. three times during one scene. Uh, they did their best they could to catch, and eventually they started catching. Okay, we're going to break for the evening. Um, remember, this is what... Uh, 
a couple more hours on this, maybe? Less, less than a couple. I'm sorry. Less than a couple, but it, we've still got quite a ways to go. Okay. So um, that, if I can judge, just yeah. for the record, we stopped this redacted video at one hour and five minutes. Okay, so we will uh, carry this on tomorrow. Uh, this will be what we uh, queue up with. Please don't talk among yourselves or anyone else about the evidence received here in court. Don't do any research. Don't look up the, 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 the movie set or this case or anything. Thank you. Have a good evening. See you at 8.30 downstairs. All rise. <laughs>